Okay, so uh, welcome to the last ace play in the first nine and the second eight of the President's Eights. Uh, we're going to, to cover Lawn 3, which will be double banked. So we're going to have um, Chris McWhorter and Robert Fletcher as our primary game that we're going to cover. And incidental to that on the same lawn will be Shane Downey against Malcolm Fletcher. The first nine are on the left hand side today, um, lawns one, four and three, three being double banked and on the right hand side today is the second eight where we've got uh, on lawn five nearest us we've got Phil Roach playing Kevin McGlynn and obviously the other games fan off around the place. Most of those games have actually already started. Um, as has the game between Torben and Barry Jennings on Lawn 4. Uh, three of the other games were still waiting to get going. They're either in the warm-up or they're at the double bank game being held back. Or Jamie was setting up the live stream. So they were waiting for Jamie to go out and do the warm-up. So, state of play around the place. Over in Melbourne, in the, the ladies, which is a four playing a double round robin, best of threes. So we've got Janine Sisson of Victoria leading the way going into the last day. Uh, Kay Molyneux from Victoria is a very close second and Jenny Rector of Western Australia in her first venture outside of WA is uh, in third place and not out of the running. In the fifth eight we've got Ethan Gumbrell leading the way um, very closely followed by Bill Mainwaring and then a three-way tie for third place between Claire Keating, John Carr and Stephen Burns. The fourth eight follows the same pattern. We've got Greg Berry in front, narrowly from Damien Hadfield. And then a three-way tie for third place between Mark Scruton, Michael Trefusis Painter from WA and Julie Beasley. The third eight also follows the same pattern with Andy Barbero in front, narrowly from Richard Hinkst both Victorians and then you've got equal third Jazz Quinn, Malcolm Powers and Phil De Arugo or Arugio, however you say that. Sorry Phil. Here in the second eight the pattern's different. We've got Barry Hayden clearly in front uh, undefeated. Phil Roach is still breathing down his neck though so Barry can't slip up and David Scott is in third place. And in the first nine which is a little bit messed around to follow because of the buys. We've got Robert Fletcher clearly in front, uh, undefeated with six wins, and he has two games or matches to play today. Uh, and Malcolm Fletcher is currently second with five wins and one match to play today. And Pete Landry is third. He has five wins and one match to play today, but he has the buy in the first round. So looking at that more closely it would appear that Robert has pretty much got the block sewn up um, already uh, and there's a bit of a blanket field if you like for second place depending on who has a buy win and who plays who um, so all to play for if you want a silver medal but likely Robert's got the big one so boys have finished their warm-up Sorting the clips out. We've got fabulous Phil Chaddock doing the camera work. He's shaking like a leaf at the moment because he's under pressure. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> so Chris won the toss and is playing the blue one. Looks to be a nice weight. And it's just going to drift past the front of the hoop. And Robert replies with the red going deep. The cameraman's getting very adventurous and panning around here to follow the, the ball. So 
of light coming in. It's a similar length further back when it was curled around and set probably where it's not makeable. And the yellow comes on deeper. Yeah, sits out in a nice position out near the red. So yeah, so Chris has already got a few little problems here. He's he's tight in and a little bit too far near the ball's a runner. And has to decide whether he's going to hit um, uh, Robert back to the boundary, which is not much further back than from where he already is, or whether he's going to go for a cute little block in front of the hoop. So once the boys have got through hoop two, uh, we'll likely see Malcolm and Shane come out and start. Over on uh, Lawn 5, which we are not covering today, um, we would have been normally, we may have had a wrong ball play, and the uh, referee is sorting that out currently. So um, Chris went for the tight little block in front of the hoop, seems to have got it. And red, red is... Is Red jumping or yeah, Red is attempting a jump. Is that actually hit blue? As quite a few jump shots tend to do, um, and it has jammed the blue into the left hand upright. So uh, Red will get smashed away, I would think, by Black. But Blue is now no longer a runner. It's stuck up against the hoop leg, uh, and Yellow is in a. Uh, long-ish jumping position. I don't think there's any off there. So, so Blacks. I, sh I did say it's probably going to shoot uh, smack red away, but probably won't. I'll probably have to do something about yellow here. Uh, blue may not be able to do anything about red after that, though. So, lots of options. None of them looking overly appealing for blue and black. Black's played a, a soft clearance on yellow to the boundary. Can't see that from here. Phil, is it on the boundary? Um, yep. Okay, half a metre in from the boundary. Black's held a position four, four yards back from the hoop. Yep, yeah, yeah, three and a half, four yards back. Okay, yellow's just hit black. Now. Yes. Uh, so blue stuck on the leg. Limited options. Can it get red? That's what Chris is looking at. Seems to think he's got enough of red to make this a viable shot. Just needs to be careful that he doesn't tangle up in the um, with the hoop legs when he plays this. And he did tangle up in the hoop legs and he's just um, moved the blue possibly by yeah. moving it off the hoop uh, just checking the hoop now to see how solid it is not particularly by the look of that from the, the referee shaking it so uh, Reed has a gimme clearance and if yellow was a good runner he'd probably just Dispatch blue to the distance, not care where red goes, but yellow, he's just checking now, may not be the greatest runner, so he might just play a tiny stop shot here, positioning red in front, and let yellow take care of blue. Or he may have it in off as well. Oh, it's just a small stop shot. Red's now the runner, yellow's going to hit blue. For those who were at the coaching session the other day, that's the triangle we were talking about, where the two balls work together to clear the other ball. Um, the the fourth ball, in this case black, has to be a long way away though to make this viable, and it is. 
So Blake, uh, we can't really tell from the angle what he's shooting at, but my gut feeling is he's not shooting at yellow. And this looks like he must see a bit of red, yeah. Well, that's one way of hitting it. <laughs> it's come through the back of the hoop and it's caught a bit of red. <laughs> Probably still stick to the same plan and get rid of blue one. Yeah, yeah, yellow, yellow is... Well, I was thinking about it again now, but... Because blue isn't a runner. He's thinking about uh, yellow clearing blue and red running the hoop from where it is now, positioned. Less ideal than a few minutes ago, but still viable. Does that and propels blue to the far boundary, more or less, and uh, yellow two thirds of the way to hoop two. So if he gets hoop one with red, he's got a ball up near hoop two straight away. Sorting that hoop out. shooting at red um, misses to the right Reds run the hoop very comfortably all the way to the far boundary behind hoop two. One nil to Robert. sure but we think the last time that Chris and Robert played was uh, at a squad practice for the Australian um, team at Geelong quite a few years ago and um, Robert beat everybody that day except Chris so um, Malcolm and Shane are just getting ready to um, join us on the court but waiting until um, hoop two is run yeah which is now <laughs> as yellow confidently runs hoop two from where it had ended up after playing that great um, shot promotion shot off of blue two zero to robert Secondary balls are warming up. Shane was here relatively early. Um, so he's had a, a decent practice, but uh, Malcolm only recently arriving has decided to have his five minutes warm up. Shane seems to be hanging back and not bothering with that. Okay, primary game. Blue came up short of hoop three. Um, red's taken the standard sort of deep running position. So Black needs to um, get in there. And he's looking, I guess, through the line of blue, just heading for position, possibly through blue, just in case he does get a bunt. Uh, that seems to be the line, but he's a bit left, and he hasn't got a lot of weight on it, and he's short as well. Yellow coming in. Slightly closer than red to a running position. Blue probably can't see red through black now as well. Not that there's a lot of value, I guess, in um, clearing red a yard. This probably needs um, an accurate block do that by just putting blue in front of the hoop obviously. 
could also try to put blue in closer and off of black and try to get black in the way of red as well but this is the easier shot just got to get the pace right and he hasn't he's uh, stuck it on the the left hand upright as we look at it that'll well it'll stop red but it'll assist yellow more than likely yes so uh, smart money on red spanking black yep Robert has always giving everything a good look and considering all his options. In terms of time to play shots, Robert would probably be the the slowest player in the field, but in terms of finishing games, he would be probably close to the fastest because once he's considered his options, he usually doesn't get it wrong. He's dispatched black to the far end of the lawn. It does give yellow a second option. Now yellow could take the hoop, providing there's not too much of blue in the way. Or yellow could just come in closer where blue can't hit it. And, um, red's in a position to take care of pretty much everything else blue does. I think black's got everything in its way going back out. Has it? No. Okay, I can't see black from where I'm sitting. The cameraman thinks black may have um, furniture between it and the play. It's coming off with a little bit of pace off. Missing red. Yellow playing has failed the hoop. It's caught the uh, right hand as we look at it upright. So he may have may have had a tiny tiny bit of blue in the way on the left hand upright and just came across a tiny bit. Trouble there though is that red now not going, hasn't got to play on the black. Yes, yeah, yellow's bounced to where red probably can't see black. Okay, blue doesn't seem to be. Oh, it's having a bit more of a think about it all now. It looked like Blue was uh, able to hit Red and was going to do so, but now he's having a rethink. So Malcolm and Shane have started. Got a good ball in by Malcolm to begin with. A uh, pretty good response from Shane. Uh, Malcolm's brown, though, is uh, not good at all. It's gone to the wrong side of the hoop. Okay. Yeah, Blue's tried to stymie red. Uh, I don't know if you're getting the cameraman's uh, voice through the microphone. I think the microphone's not set up that way, so if you. Oh, it should be quiet while Shane plays. Okay, so Shane's shot and missed. Um, yeah, tried to stymie red uh, from something. Um, didn't get it, but Robert's now considering the fact that red cannot hit black anyway through yellow. So, options, I guess. Jump shot over yellow to hit black. That trick rarely works. Um, so, more likely uh, red promoting yellow trying to uh, style me black with yellow. And I just tried to hit black with yellow and got a bit too much cut and red's gone into a running position. Yellow's missed black so black will presumably at least attempt to run the hoop. Odds are probably in his favour but if he does fail it red is now a runner. And he's run that and probably run up with just enough to block red down to the next hoop as well. 2-1 to Robert.
Hopefully this is all going out just fine. I've just noticed that we're getting a warning about the bit rate. That means absolutely zero to me being a non-tech person, but um, uh, if that's something serious, well, sorry about that. <laughs> Jamie will sort it later. <laughs> or not. <laughs> it's a good yellow down. Uh, short. Uh, about four yards back. Blue is very good. Has come right down to the front of the hoop. Two feet out, blocking yellow at the hoop as well. Red's been forced a little bit wide by the black, but this lawn plays the opposite to five, where we've been doing most of the commentary and stream on. Uh, this one slopes right left, and he used that slope to bring the red around to the front of the hoop. And black is also coming down that line and just drifting past the hoop. So it's yellow to clear blue and open the hoop up for red to be the runner. But he's sent a ball that into the hoop, it's bounced back and the yellow is caught up and hit it again and and propped it right in front. So a quick turn around here should be a hoop to tie it up at two all and is. Red to five. Very nice. we're watching the primary game um, not the secondary game as such that's just an added bonus for you on this lawn uh, I believe Malcolm got hoop one okay so black takes position a bit deeper so the play is going to be um, blue to hit red uh, if red's comfortable running that hoop then yellow is only a yard and a half two yards from blue so it may block blue here or it might dispatch blue to uh, further into the distance might try to organize some sort of wire it's cut yellow's cut blue to the other side of the lawn north of hoop one on the boundary so uh, blue has give has a 14 yard more or less shot at red so he's uh, more than doubled the length of the shot that blue's got uh, yeah I can't see yellow from here but I'll go with the cameraman on that okay it appears that Shane has just run hoop 2 from one all in that game There's a bit of a delay. Uh, why are we having a delay? Is that because of the next lawn? Chris wants to stalk the ball, but Jamie is playing uh, around that point in the lawn. I think that's what's happening. Okay, pan down a bit so we can see Jamie playing. And a referee standing there watching because the balls are very close together. Chris is just waiting for all that to happen before he stalks the ball. So the boys are looking very snappy this morning. Robert uh, resplendent in his whites. And Malcolm staying with the same kind of golf style shirt and black pants that he's been wearing most days. Blue missed, which is statistically not unexpected. And Reds smoothly run the hoop past six and most of the way to the boundary. 
three two to Robert. Apparently we've got 14 viewers already. That's good action early on. On the big day. Yeah, very nice um, approach to six by Black. Uh, hard to tell if it's wide from red. It's close to being wide from red, but my feeling is possibly not. Okay, so there's a lot of um, chat and people wandering around below the clubhouse window here. We've got a referee, Robert, trying to play his yellow ball. And maybe others involved, don't, well, maybe not. So, so yellow coming up. It's pace off. And dropping in right behind black. About two feet ish back from black, probably affecting the swing slightly. The fact that he didn't shoot at black would tend to indicate that red has got a shot. So blue's coming in. Weight looks good. Let's just gonna carry up and touch the black. Oh, he stomped himself. Oh, uh, doubles with Chris. Doubles with Chris. Uh, played a played a doubles competition in uh, Vic. Was it, oh, it was the Australian Open, wasn't it? Yeah, played in the Australian Open with um, Chris once many years ago, and uh, we did this to each other all weekend. Just stymied each other constantly. Hence the doubles with Chris um, mention. That's a pretty good shot by Pink. Oh. Uh, so in the other game, Malcolm took uh, mate hoop three for two one lead. So red now doesn't have to hit black and has decided just to come in. Decent pace, really nice position. Um, so good luck sorting this out, black. First thing to decide, of course, is are they touching? The referee's there. Uh, I presume that's how he always stands, and not that he's um, giving this a lot of thought with his hand on his chin. Shane, Shane's photo bombing the picture here. All right, so it may well be they are touching, and he's looking at a uh, croquet stroke from AC. Uh, where he can, um, he'll have to send Blue away to do it, but where he can uh, play a little roll, uh, split roll, and put um, black into yellow. Um, um, there's not a lot of value in moving Blue miles away because Red's a runner as well, so this could be a very soft shot, and is. And I think he's done it. He's put black where he's stymied yellow, but he may have got yellow in between red and blue. That doesn't seem to worry Robert who looks like he's just going to play yellow and clear blue. It's a pretty good effort there by Chris. Okay so yellow does clear blue and in the process um, flicks off and promotes itself to the boundary south of hoop 7. My bit rate's gone down a bit, and my viewers have gone up. Yay! <laughs> okay, blue coming in from uh, 
from distance has missed to the right of red and we'll assume that red is going to back itself to run this hoop with a, uh, a live or legal yellow on the boundary over in the hoop 7 vicinity oh okay red does not run the hoop it's taken leg and stopped in the jaws so being in the jaws is not a bad outcome but having black just behind it to jump over you is a bad outcome uh, yeah I've got, got to move the president on here carry on close the door very good <laughs> right Ball's going in all directions here. The joys of double banking. Okay, black. Fairly crucial jump shot, this. Got it. Very nice. So, black jumps red for three all. Uh, red will be stymied up from being able to get to hoop 7 but yellow is already over near hoop 7 on the boundary and has a oh, an 8 yard approach which he's nailed to a nice running position so Chris's dilemma now now that red's out of the play is do I position blue and then hit with black uh, it's only hitting to the short boundary or do I hit yellow now knowing I could also have a shot with black afterwards if I miss it looks like he's hitting now and does very nice so put yellow back out onto the boundary uh, blue also blue's down around the penalty point so red's just looking at whether he can actually get through the hoop and stymie black's approach to seven it seems to think he can. No, he's he's actually been able to run the hoop at speed and roke black to the boundary and deflect red slightly towards seven. So force black deeper and uh, further, obviously further back from the hoop. Nice position he's gone to. Referee's just giving Chris instructions as to where his ball went out exactly. Uh, Robert is bringing the yellow to the boundary. Uh, three yards west of black. Blue's coming into the vacant space between black and yellow and the hoop and he's got in there but only just that's that's a very very angry attempt at a hoop if he does take it on uh, red takes a much better position than blue so black would appear to have a fairly wide target of hoop and red there uh, probably got to choose one of them uh, I'll probably be the hoop even though the red is a, a bigger target than the middle of the hoop is and that's missed everything Okay, so yellow will clear blue, or at least attempt to, and probably will on, on form. Yep, just got to move the pipe. Blue to the far end of the lawn. 
and I'm almost certainly that blue is wide from red. So whilst Chris is walking down here, so the weather today it's quite still, um, and there was a, a dew on the lawns this morning, uh, but we did start later. Most of that seems to have gone. Courts were awarded again last night. Um, not mown, so they might be a tiny bit slower. It kind of feels a little, the weather does kind of feel a little foreboding, but there isn't rain forecast. Blue coming in, nowhere near red. That's a, a long way away from red. Hoop setters have been doing a diligent job, but it looks like today there's a few hoops that have aren't perhaps as solid as they ought to be. Okay, reds are in that hoop. To just past um, eight, and very close to eight on the line down as well. So four three to Robert. a bit of track and what's happening with Malcolm and Shane but I've, my feeling is Malcolm is 3-2 up quick scout round of the clips would seem to be the case, 3-2 to Malcolm and it looks like Shane's got a ball stuck on the leg of 6 and a potential in off for Brown which he's not trying anyway Chris is bringing black in from over by the penalty point to the front of hoop 8 probably good enough yellow coming down pace well and truly off, and that's um, hung back, well, probably where he wants it, but it's hung back um, three yards. Yeah, we can't see uh, red from where it's gone to. Oh, yes we can, just, so blue to play. Red can hit black, but it's damn close. Okay, so we're, the cameraman thinks red can hit black, but we're not sure about whether it is actually partially or fully white. Blue's coming down from the top end of the lawns. have negotiated its way past everything. Narrowly missing yellow and missing the hoop to the near side to us, which is the right as we look at it. practicing his swing now up there on the north boundary okay so Red's just waiting for the double banking um, during which time Malcolm has missed a um, 3-4 yarder in the middle of the lawn Okay, red hits. So red has rocaded black away, and it went through the other game, very close to the white. So the yellow, three and a half yards back from the hoop, is now the sole runner. And black coming down from up by hoop three needs to do something about that. He hasn't hit it full pace, and again he's he's missed comfortably to the right. Just checking how his feet are now. So yellow fairly, fairly quickly into position to stalk this one, and runs it for a five-three lead.
So uh, both Chris and Malcolm spending a bit of time um, checking their swings. Everybody's waiting for everybody else here to play. That's the joys of double banking. So Shane's played his little stop shot, pink on brown, and now Chris is able to play across. So blue coming across from eight to nine looks a good length. It's just died a little bit, but it'll do. Robert's coming to have a look. So the balls are coming off the court in the court one between Gary and Jamie. No idea who won. Robert's lining up his shot, red at blue, and his brother just wanders through his line of aim, completely oblivious. <laughs> yes, right. Okay, so red wasn't shooting at blue, it was just coming in. And it too has di <coughs> died as it approached the hoop, and uh, a bit short and fairly angling. Shane's run good hoop six with white to tie that game up at three all. Like Torben and Barry are into game two. Okay, black coming in is even shorter. So blue barely got there, and the next two balls have got progressively further away. Of course, black may have been trying to block yellow at blue, and it didn't, and um, yellow missed blue anyway. Set is just um, dealing with a few hoops to make them a bit more solid. Yeah. He, uh, he really gave that a crunch trying to get it through the hoop and up to the next hoop, and it's rejected. Temperatures just dropped. It's not quite cool here. Red trying to get into the hoop. Pace was off, so it looked like it was time to run the jaws or just wiggle through, and he has effectively jaws. It's, it's bounced out enough that Black can see a fair bit of it. softly at red misses to the right cut it and cut it to a position where blue has a better clearance on red than it did previously. It's taken away the potential jump shot but has improved the clearance. Yeah, I think given the, the last one he'll probably pace this up. No he didn't. He still went relatively softly at it. He did get it this time and kicked it out to where it's no longer a runner, so he's achieved his goal. And it appears that Robert's just going to try and put it back there. It's quite an angle. And it's hit near leg. 
and bounced to somewhere not particularly useful. Yeah, it's definitely not running from where it is now. It may be able to jaws again if uh, balls aren't in the vicinity. Red can see that. Um, All right, so he's hopefully trying to get a block yellow at the hoop as well, and he's not got anywhere near that. So yellow, presumably at the hoop, but maybe at black. No, well, or both, as the case may be. So, <laughs> so clears black, deflects onto partner ball red and deflects into the jaws. That's um, what the English used to say, he's throwing out the stopping best to uh, stop Chris from getting into the game. Poor Blue was the only ball not invited to the party. Yeah, that's right, so Blue's got nothing. It's gone to the back boundary uh, on the assumption that Black gets yellow out. So red basically only got two options here. It can uh, just be a second runner and if the yellow gets hit, uh, or it can try to block black at yellow. He's going for the second runner. And putting red in a position where as yellow comes out, if it comes out, it doesn't take red out as well. Twenty one viewers are going gangbusters here this morning. And that black's given that a crunch and missed. So we've got yellow with a straightforward hoop for a 6-3 lead, but he could get this all the way up to the front of the next hoop with relative ease for Robert and take complete control and maybe be one rotation away from winning the first game. And that's maybe a tiny bit shorter of where we'd like to be, but that's pretty good. 6-3. So while Chris um, figures out what he's going to do next, uh, Malcolm got back in front against Shane. Uh, and they just stopped waiting for the double banking. That's a good Lou. Yeah, it's pretty good. Barry and Torben are in game two. Gary and Jamie are in game two. Can't tell you who won the first. We're not using any scoreboards. Not enough volunteers for that. Red's gone up and nestled on yellow but bounced to the side. So that's a little bit of luck for Robert that Chris didn't have earlier in the game. Black's struggling. It's got to the same distance but it's... Um, not interfering and it looks like yellow is now going to hit blue it's probably a tiny bit of red deflecting red off the uh, deflecting yellow off the line of running the hoop I'm always having another look at that now and he's talking himself into it so it's yellow for hoop and game That did nothing when it hit the hoop leg. It's just stopped dead. It's, seems to be a little bit on the right hand wire, but doesn't really matter. He's going to go for the jump shot anyway. So. 
Kevin the filler in game two. Nice jump shot by Chris. Stays in the game at 6 4 down. Read a bit. Well, I think I can get over there. It's just, it's just going to be very limited in exactly where its range is going to be. A red, red seems to be limited as well because black seems to be blocking its line. It's forcing red deeper, but he probably wanted to go deeper anyway. Yeah, that's maybe maybe forced out a tiny bit further than he would like, but probably somewhere around there he was going. Black will come inside that, I think. And does and blocks. No, just gone past the block on the hoop for red. Uh, yellow doesn't look too phased. He can certainly get around somewhere around where black is. Yep, that looks full. Well, it's got a bit more than uh, it looked off the stick. Uh, but it's good, it's in there, and it's not stopping red at black, it's not stopping red at hoop. Blues come in very softly at red. It just drifted past on the, the low side of from where we're looking at. So red has the choice of clearing black, running the hoop, or what we saw down here at um, hoop nine. He couldn't do both, but anyway, he's cleared black. So he's happier that yellow is his runner. While Chris again wanders down the lawn to his ball, we've got um, David Scott's game has just finished, playing Janine. Again, I didn't see who won. Phil and Kevin are in game two. Barry and Mary could well be in game two. So everybody's going on at pace here. And... Uh, Black has fired from down by hoop 5 at the yellow and missed. And at virtually the same time, Malcolm has uh, run a very long hoop at 10 and appears to have won the game. Yep, 7 3. Okay, yellow fails another hoop. It's bounced back to a position that blue shouldn't have any trouble getting rid of it. Shane photo bombing again. Well, Blue decided not to get rid of it and just softly came in. And looks very disappointed. Uh, what was he trying to do there? Maybe he was trying to uh, stop behind Yellow and stymie it up and let Black have a ping at the hoop. The red coming in. Again, drifting a little long. So, black may not be able to see yellow now. It can certainly see the hoop. hoop. Oh, pace off again. It doesn't look happy. And he's cut blue uh, a few inches and stymied up yellow's shot a bit. Uh, I think 
Yellow is fairly limited in what it can do here. It certainly will stop blue from being a runner, but uh, he's having a few good looks at it. Shane's not hanging around, he's starting game two. He's got blue well away. Deflected his yellow to a reasonably good position. Blue missed the red. He missed it to the left. Now he's having another look at his feet. Yeah, red has cleared black and tried to come across the front of the hoop, which he's done. And black nearly went through the green ball coming on in game two of the other game. length. So Yellow was going to have a, a ping at the hoop but now he may, well he's got a choice, he can either position, play the little triangle or he can, um, yeah, or he can clear black or he could still run the hoop of course. Uh, he's feeling as this is going to be the little triangle, he's going to position. Yep. Blue is a long way away. It's slightly more than a half court shot, so we'll go. We'll go with 15 yards, 16 yards. A yellow runner and red clearing black is what's staring at him. So he needs to do something about one of those two balls. Doesn't matter which. I've got a feeling he probably can't see red. He might even be struggling to see yellow through the other hoop. Doesn't look too. Uh, no, I don't know what he's shooting at. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Uh, yeah, he's coming in softly and wide of hoop two. So I'm gonna. Yep. If he's gone past there, he must have been wide from both balls. overly worrying about the cut. A nice bit of work there, threading the black and the green past each other. Neither of them would have been critical out almost on the boundary. So. Alright, so um, black needs to do something about yellow, otherwise it's game over. So how about we call a spectacular in-off? <laughs> Way to go. Yeah. Watch him play with the break. Nowhere near it. Oh, damn. <laughs> well, back down here to the side yeah, nearly, yeah, nearly ran this tiny little hoop down here. <laughs> okay, so yellow's got slightly more than a tap through, but not much more for the win, and does it. Attempting the superfluous extra hoop. Game one to Robert. So while they're doing whatever they do between games, I uh, haven't got any scores to give you because I don't know what they are, but um, there's a lot of, I think there's been a lot of pretty quick progress this morning. There seems to be, everybody seems to be at least uh, well advanced in game two, except perhaps the one we're watching. Yours already? Yeah, that's mine, yeah. Pete sitting behind us looking very pensive, waiting for his chance to get out there and play. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, Barry, Barry Jr. explodes very quickly and tends to, well, he doesn't intend to, but people get sucked along and play kind of at his pace, which is probably something they want to avoid. But it makes the game go quick. No, I don't know. Never miss a chance to sledge Torben, Chris. Well done. Uh, probably the game with the most interest over there in the second eights is on lawn eight between Barry Hayden and Mary McMahon. Um, Mary has... Well, I don't know how her form has been, but she hasn't managed to produce any match wins. Um, Barry has not lost a match. Um... So obviously on form, you would think Barry would win that and maintain his lead um, going into the last round. But you know, you never can tell. Mary can is a very good player. She could easily um, cause an upset there and bring Barry back to the pack. Oh, thanks. Yeah, Brett and Graham are just throwing balls off. Um, again. No idea where they are in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah. So Chris, Chris, a student of Brett's body language, has said Brett's walking fast, so he must have won. <laughs> He's usually much more chirpy when he wins. It's been very quiet this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so Brett and Janine are on a bit of a caravan of courage around Australia. They brought the caravan over to Tasmania on the ferry, playing here in the President's Eights, going on to play in the Tasmanian men's and ladies, and playing in everything they can while they're on their little trip around. Recently played in the Victorian Open doubles and singles, uh, and the Australia Day singles in Victoria. Um, managed, Brett managed a silver medal, I think, in the um, Open. It's an impressive looking jump shot there by Shane at hoop two in game two to make that one all. Yeah, there's a fair bit of interesting croquet happening in Tasmania at the moment. We've got this event. Following up with, um, we've got, they've got a state squad practice in GC tomorrow. Next weekend, they've got the GC men's and ladies singles. Uh, they've got the um, AC nationals and air cup uh, at first weekend in March. Starts well, starts the first weekend in March. Yeah, so lots going on down here. Those other events are all in Hobart except for the squad practice which is here tomorrow so extended delay before we start um, game two while the other game gets through or has now got through hoop two and gets away from up there we'll just turn the mic off for a second have a drink
Okay, we're back, because they're back. Uh, Chris is on with blue. Short. Robert's on with the red. I can't see it now, so I'll rely on the cameraman. Just sort of in front of Okay. So deep, but in front of the hoop. Okay, black's coming in closer. He's got that one right. That looks pretty good. Yellow's come in in front of the hoop, not as deep as red. Took a lot of care there in um, lining up black, uh, brown, clearing white in the secondary game and then crashed into the back of the hoop and deflected away. Okay, so Chris has decided to play uh, blue softly, uh, presumably going down where I can't see to block um, red on the boundary somewhere. The cameraman's trying to tilt the camera around so we can see that. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, that, they, they were going like a rocket. That could have been game two, I think. Yeah, it is. But who got the first game? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. You can't watch everything. You can. <laughs> okay, so red um, shot at black and missed. Pete, Pete was heavily invested in uh, what was going on between Barry and Torben, but um, I couldn't give him any information. And uh, so Chris running hoop one, uh, fairly close in, but Angley has done so. Up past hoop two, so Chris in front, one nil in the second game. I've accidentally pressed two there. That's getting ambitious. Okay, so yellow comes up, hoop running position, uh, three and a half yards out on a tiny bit of an angle. Uh, Pete's now bolted and Torben's heading this way, we could have asked him what happened up there. <laughs> Traditionally Torben and Barry play fairly close games. Um, and they, their wins and losses alternate fairly heavily. And the last time they played, Barry beat Torben. So I'm going to take a wild guess that Torben might have beaten Barry this time. Yeah, Red's come in, and that's really nice. I'll just get Torben's attention. Did you win, Torben? He did. Yep, Torben won finally. There you go. So when the um, scheduling was done for this, there was a lot of concern that people should um, not uh, book early flights because uh, today could go very deep. Uh, none of the days have gone particularly deep, even the day with the extra round. Um, and today, at the moment, even though we started an hour late, is flying along. here while um, Chris waits for Shane to play pink in the secondary game but um, Shane's had a refusal and he's had to go around again. Oh. Right, Shane has now played and missed both balls. Yeah, 
So while Chris is still lining up, Malcolm is attempting to get hoop five and has for a 3-2 lead. And after all that delay, Chris has fired black at presumably red, or maybe the double of red and yellow and has missed. So yellow clearing blue up there has cut blue to presumably the wide spot from red. Chris is looking a bit uh, like that's what's happened. Probably ruining ruin the previous shot missing and getting himself into this position. So just while he sits on his haunches and thinks about this, we'll just watch the other game for a second. Um, Shane put a good ball to six with white um, and Malcolm's now tried a promotion which is not produced a runner but has possibly produced a ball that could clear. Uh, Chris has come in pace off with blue and it's just nibbled the back of the hoop and bounced out and red should run and does for one all. Again, we're waiting for one game, waiting for the other. That's a nice hoop nice run by Malcolm with Brown to um, move away to a 4-2 lead in that second game. He won the first. Now we're going to have to think about who's playing what to wear. Referee's watching the pink. Black's coming, roaring up from the bottom boundary. Thank you. And has gone to north boundary um, front of hoop three. So obviously that's a seven yard hoop shot if he wants to take that on when he next gets a chance to play with black. Now secondaries have stopped to let the primaries play across. So yellow has <laughs> yellow has come come across to the same position as black, almost perfectly because it's hit black. No, no, but because we play where it first crosses the inside of the line, uh, yellow is actually about a yard now. Oh, a yard, just maybe just over a yard uh, left as we look at it of black. Of course, there's no penalty for doing that nowadays. A long, long time ago, uh, maybe maybe two or three incarnations of the rules back. If you hit an outside agency, that was the end of your turn. Okay, blue coming in, and oh, that's brilliant. That's a really nice shot. coming in also at nice pace also a really nice shot yeah. so yellow mm -hmm. can see blue yellow can't see the hoop through red perhaps yeah, yeah, well, Chris is going to um, play black carefully just inside the boundary to try and produce a block stroke stymie, whatever you want to call it, on the boundary. He's pasted up quite nicely and got it. Now, yellow's coming back on. They're very close together. But I would expect here that yellow will attempt to um, propel black 
at speed uh, yep at an angle such that black might take the blue out what he tried to do he, it was a good effort and he just missed on the um, right as we look at it <coughs> I've just noticed I've got the, um, the score wrong again for some reason I've been pressing one and two comes up So the score was 1-1, one, one, and it's now 2-1 to Chris. Red's come down quite nicely. And black's coming in. Inside red. And just missing the hoop to the left as we look at it. Nice yellow. Blue, blue coming in pace off. Doesn't like it. Yeah. Well to the low side. So yellow wide from blue. Red will take on the hoop. And runs it easily. I'm just going to check my s score. I've got to put glasses on to do this just to make sure each time I press this I'm getting the right numbers coming up. Tool. It's come up as tool. Brilliant. Love a system that works. Yeah, it's the operator that's the issue, I think. <laughs> Doing a lot of um, chopping of changing of um, glasses and sunglasses. And oh, excuse me. Okay, black's nice. Yellow is nicer. If he was really happy with black, he would do something about red, but uh, it seems to be what he's doing. He's rolled the red off and he's going to uh, style me out. That would appear to be the case. this at hoop 3 and it worked well. Have another go here at hoop 5. Okay. And weight's reasonable. And then Just short. Thank you Chris. looking, a lot of thinking going on. So 
the reds coming with a slight flick off of the blue to uh, a deep position as a runner. So black can obviously smack yellow away, or it could choose to try and run the hoop. And he's gone softly on the hoop and jaws it, which would uh, <laughs> yes take the clip off for Robert because Robert's going to go straight into a jump shot position from a relatively straightforward point. We would think he would get this. And does. And kicks the black back just a little bit as well. Okay, 3 2 to Robert. Hello. Alright. Did you win? No. So, so Brett. So, <laughs> so Brett's um, beaten Graham in two. Yep, in two. Okay. Well, somebody thinks that's funny. So, very nice blue to um, six. Reds come up very quietly and um, short and wide. Black managed to get through the hoop, uh, weaves its way around yellow, and stops a yard and a half past the peg. So yellow doesn't seem to be too phased by all the ball positions and is shooting at blue and nicking it, which might be enough to hold blue up for a while. So it's quite angly. So we could have blue trying an angly hoop, we could have blue going for the jaws, we could have blue clearing red. No, blue's taking the probably more sensible option of clearing red. Mary and Barry are apparently game all. It's a nice clearance by um, Blue. Didn't hang around itself though. Hello. How did you go? You won. That was against? Oh, in two. Okay, so Jamie beat Gary in two. So Barry and uh, Pete, Pete, no, Barry Jennings and Pete are now warming up on that board. So that's Jamie finished for the competition. Okay. Alright, should I be worried about that warning there? Okay, that's not great. Um, red came back in, and black has just gone softly on the hoop and missed it completely to the left. And blue has gone medium pace, medium soft at yellow, and again missed to the left. So, uh, How long has it been like that? 
oh, pretty much since we started. That little warning came up. The bit rate stayed around 27, 26, whatever that means. Mm. black promoted blue hasn't got up there itself but has got blue out to the side where it can do something about the runners so yellow has just positioned wide from black and wide enough maybe that blue can't get rid of both balls my red is left of yellow so we could nick we could off centre red and take out both red and yellow but of course it blue would vanish itself we certainly won't go softly this one nope. I think the internet might be lower which is why it's yeah. Yeah. Anyway, blue's cleared red, both balls gone to the boundary, leaving um, yellow and black wide across hoop six. So red will come in, I would imagine, without moving black, won't go anywhere near that. I would, I would think it will go one side or the other of the hoop so that. Um, if black pops its head through from the other side, red's in a position to clear it. So, okay, so they're going to stop for a while while the um, double banking plays through them. Okay, Wade says it looks fine. This is probably a while ago as well. And Dwayne didn't know it was live streamed until yesterday either. Well, Dwayne, you got some catching up to do then. Okay, so um, this going softly thing is just not working for Chris. He's gone softly with Black trying to get back through the hoop and he's ended up stuck in the jaws. Yeah. So Yellow will jump that and leave Black stymied in there Ooh, okay well it doesn't matter about putting black through because it came in from the wrong side but it did free black up for going to the next hoop but 4-2 all the same Blue's come in from the boundary on the east side and got position in a reasonably good position. Reed's shot at that and missed. of blue slightly it might have been looking to block yellow at blue and feeling as it's just drifted past the block line slightly Robert's just waiting for a double banking shot to be played Chris is um, obviously planning to swim back to Australia he's practicing his freestyle over on the end, next court mainland Australia I should have said. Yellow's come in very nicely in front of the hoop. 
doesn't appear to have blocked blue at the hoop though. Eh? And blue runs it. Four three to Robert. coming down to the next two stopping in that distance where everybody seems to want to stop uh, four yards four and a half yards back and black coming inside that no doubt yep yard and a half back so have we got any reports from uh, Ethan's games or the like my screen but anyway no yes had a win game one okay yellow came down very similar to uh, red blues cranked it up trying to hit oh <laughs> oh <laughs> all right blue cranked it up trying to hit one of red or yellow probably red missed um, went down to the boundary, ricocheted back off the wall and hit his own black on the ricochet. Now the referee's got to try and figure out where exactly it was. Chris has put it in one place, the referee's put it in another and now Robert's put it somewhere else. done so, hasn't held in front of the hoop, but probably doesn't care. It's close enough to be in the fight, and yellow is a runner. I've got to look away, because Jamie's pressing lots of buttons, and it's stressing me out. Okay, Black coming in has failed to get to the playing side of the hoop by about six inches, maybe nine inches. So yellow has uh, a shot and bounces out. Haven't seen that too often. Shane seems to be doing quite well in this second game against Malcolm. going for a jump shot at 11 and peels Shane through referee standing in the way he's now moved so black is back in front of the hoop and red has cleared it blue is not a runner so um, Chris is just doing some pointing and now it looks like black's just coming back in so looking at the world rankings um, yesterday Robert was ranked three in the world but was only seven ranking points off number one having not lost a game here, even if he was only getting one point per win, he would be back to number one in the world at the end of this event. Yellow's come back in, slightly deeper and wider of black, uh, so give blue some things to think about. Whatever Chris does, he wants to give away going softly or something, because that's just not working. So he's just going to put blue in front. It's 
seems to be all right. Red at black hits. to be watching court three but it's it's not good to have the clubhouse or wall between us and the boundary where red and black now are I don't know what you can see on the screen but I can't see anything from where I'm sitting you can see Robert standing down there oh yep cameraman's down for the look around the corner job which has just blocked my view of everything. <laughs> it's not about you. No, yeah, it's not about me, that's right. It's about the viewers at home. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of people standing around and waiting for something to happen here, so I'm guessing Chris is considering his options and he, he is shooting black at yellow and missed. And he's hit the rubber mallet at the far end of the lawn. Bounced on to the next court. So yellow now will presumably remove the blue runner. Oh. Um, okay. Is that that's yellow has hit blue into the uh, as we look at it. Right hand upright, or the nearest upright to me, and and it's bounced back. And yellow, of course, has vanished, but blue does not appear to be a runner anymore. But it's very, very, very tight in where you would think that even though yellow is only a yard and a bit away, blue might be able to play a small shot like that and wire from yellow. thinking about what they're going to do so Dwayne the live stream is um, not a paid for live stream it's a um, trial one that Jamie has set up um, not really officially approved by ACA but we're having a go at seeing how we can get it to work so in the secondary game on this lawn um, Shane had been doing quite well he's just attempted to uh, clear Malcolm and he's put Malcolm in the jaws of the winning hoop so Malcolm's won that one in two and, and they're off the lawn the next round only has three matches in it in this block because of the way the buyers have worked out so they won't there shouldn't be double banking in the next round uh, so Red's come in it's a runner uh, presumably yellow can see a tiny bit of blue if that's the case black coming in from distance just to be a runner So yellow couldn't see blue and it's promoted red a little bit. So perhaps blue is not a runner, perhaps blue is only going to jaws. It's quite deceptive from here. It's called the referee. And 
and he's looking like he's going to play blue back towards red. Okay, so blue could clear red, and it has. So, refresh my memory as you've got a buy in the last round. Yep. Chris has a buy in the last round. Yep. And Barry? Is it Barry? Malcolm. Malcolm. Malcolm has the buy in the last round, okay. Yes, because Barry's already on in the last round game against um, Pete. Yeah. Okay, we've got red coming in, missing everything. Not often we've had to say that with Robert's shots. So Chris will presumably take the hoop on, which has been something that's been a bit of a mixed success for, for Chris in these two games. It pays off and he's failed. So yellow just lining it up. It doesn't look very angry on the stalk, but we'll have another look while Chris tries to sort his feet out in the background. Okay, hoops run. It's 5-3 to Robert in the second. So we know Greg Fletcher is watching because he thinks the stream is great. <coughs> Dwayne's happy, Greg's happy, Wade's happy. Everybody's happy. Everybody's happy. Well, that's good. Except Chris, maybe. Chris doesn't look very happy at all. So blue across to uh, hoop nine. Very nice. Red's more or less matched it. So Black needs to think about what it wants to do because you know, cause Robert does have a very high hit rate and you would expect him to um, give Blue a bit of a shake. Alright, so um, Chris has decided to pull that old trick out again and um, attempt to stymie himself. <laughs> He's bunted Blue forward a tiny bit. Black hasn't quite covered Blue at the hoop. But has taken out anything any red but that shouldn't matter blue should attempt to probably run the hoop from there but it does leave an almighty big target for yellow to shoot at and he hits blue clean Send a ball up and didn't cut it probably on the side he would prefer, but you know, the best he can do. Got a few spectators this morning, again, being a weekend day, expect to have a few more than we did during the weekdays. Mm. 
And the sun's starting to burn off the cloud as well. Okay, red it. Well, <laughs> had a little bit of everything. So red it black, just nicked black slightly, uh, and cannoned into the left hand upright and bounced off slightly to the left. Yeah. Chris playing relaxed and confident would just walk up and run this, but it's it's been a a sequence of less than optimal shots from Chris in the last few hoops. And there's another one. So um, put a lot into it. It seemed to lift off the ground again and, and rejected right where yellow can hit it. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Oh, camera money, are you still awake? So yellow's opted to just bump black gently away and hold position in front. Um, red can finish the job on black from where it is. So he's played the little triangle again. And blue's just come in and nicked black gently. It hasn't materially affected anything, I think. So red will finish the job on black that yellow started. Yep, and he's also cut that where he's possibly kept that down the wide line. I can't see the look on Chris's face as to what's happened. But I suspect if that's not wide, it's very, very close. And yeah, Black's... Well, Chris playing Black is looking at it like he is in a bit of trouble. And he's taken pace off again coming in. And he's crept past blue but not enough to block yellow. And a quick bit of gardening. Should get the blower man out there. <laughs> I'll probably blow the pools around as well. <laughs> yeah, yellow runs easily. For a 6 3 lead. Fairly standard. See, Brett's wandered out to watch uh, Janine play. Same pace as blue, and that's where it's going to stop, right next to blue. Wax has got a bit more pace on it. It's just nibbled the red and stopped in a pretty nice spot, about three and a half yards back from the hoop. So yellow at black would seem to be the shot here, but um, blue is sort of hovering behind that. So you could miss black slightly and probably take blue out. And we could get everything, we could move all the balls here. And he has missed black slightly and taken blue out. Very nice.
So red's got black under complete control, we would think. So blue needs to do something about that. And he's cut it. Vanished in the distance himself, so he's left uh, red with a, a six yarder at black. Oh, and there's a rare miss. Well, if you're going to miss those, it's best to miss them when you're 6-3 up, I guess. Now, Chris has not looked real confident in this game in front of the hoops, but there is nothing around to put any pressure on Black. And he's run that just staggering through. So it's 6-4 to Robert. That's a nice yellow. It's offside, it's been told you can stay there. Yeah, okay, so uh, Red's been told to stay where he is even though he was offside. And a nice steady blue that's come in and done some interesting stuff. It's probably got into yellow's backswing a bit. And it may have given black a very difficult shot to clear yellow if it needs to. Red's just come into a good running position. So it's I like to think this is going to be black at yellow, unless there's something obscuring that shot. He doesn't look as thrilled now that he's standing behind black as what he was when he was walking up to it. Well, he's just going to check whether yellow does have a swing at the hoop or not. It may well be one that's sort of 50-50. Shane and Torben going on on lawn four. So Black has hit yellow. Well, he's got lucky here, I think. Black has hit yellow and cut it sideways to where it might be wired on blue through red and is. So forcing yellow to shoot the hoop. and runs it for the game and the match.
Okay, so that's Chris's competition over. He has the buy in the next round. Uh, and that means that given the other two matches have gone on, we will have Robert playing Gary in front of us on lawn three. So that should be uh, potentially a good game. Thanks, Tony Elkin. Hope you're enjoying it all.
I just update some of the um, other eights that are going on, including the ones here. So Robert's win there will make sure that he is actually the winner of this one. Uh, second place is still up for grabs. Um, although Malcolm's win over Shane hasn't... Malcolm's win over Shane still hasn't come in, so when that is added to the scores, uh, that will put Malcolm in second place and can't be displaced from that. As Pete can't win by enough against Barry, so it will be Robert and then Malcolm. Uh, second eight, we're still waiting to see what goes on. Um, and we've got Barry and Mary in game three, so Mary's looking to cause the upset and bring Barry back to the field. And Phil lost to Kevin, so that makes Barry's position a little bit stronger at the head of the field and pulls Phil back into the battle for second. Uh, in the third eight, nothing's changed yet. In the fourth eight, Julie Beasley had a win this morning, so she's up to equal lead with Damien and Greg. Uh, Michael TP won his first game in his match, so he could also make that a four-way tie at the top. We believe Ethan's won his game or match, so he should be in front in the fifth eight. And in the, the sixth, which is the four playing a double round robin, uh, only one result so far that I've seen. That's from Jenny Rector winning, so she's potentially moving up into um, second spot if things go the right way for her. It's a bit hard to see what's going on in the distance, but um, Peter and Barry are well advanced in game one, uh, going down to 12. Uh, Torben and Shane started their match there on hoop three. Suspect it's one all. Uh, second eights are all off court. Courts are being reset. The next round will be starting soonish, we hope. Yeah. Chris is just looking at Gary's photos on my Croquet West page, doing his usual sledging. And Gary's just coming around now to um, maybe have a little bit of a warm up before he starts. Um, seeing if he can take take Robert out and stop 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 Robert's unbeaten run is that your little kangaroo from Bunbury is it okay so he's bought his little little kangaroo key ringy thing that he got in the world yeah show the camera yeah yeah, yeah make it pounce throw it up in the air and see if it goes past oh yeah we can kind of see that Chris, Chris will jump on this cameraman temporarily and try and do something so, it's going to do a, it's going to do a not a drive but it's doing a bounce by it's doing its next bounce strategy 
Yeah. Yeah. It looks a little pregnant. That's because apparently it's got a, a penny in its pouch, I believe, with with Gary's birth year. 1961, yeah, that new young guy, Gary. Yeah. So Barry won the last game against Mary, so that means that Barry has got the second eights all under control. Uh, and the battle for second place, are you in the running for that? There's a heap, of, There's a heap of people in the running for second place, apparently. Yep. So we'll come down to Mostly real people, but bred as well. So that was Brett just being an idiot and trying to um, cause some damage up here with his mallet. He managed to catch the corner of the table and sent drinks flying, but fortunately didn't hit any of the electrical equipment. So no damage done. So in the second eight, um, is, there's a blanket field who could come second. Um, Brett's in the running. Uh, Kevin McGlynn, I don't think so. David Scott's probably in the prime position for second spot. Uh, Janine appears to be out of it. Phil Roach is in a pretty good position as well. So probably Phil or David. Um, 
So a lot of it's going to depend obviously on who plays who. So David is playing Graham Keating. And Phil is playing Janine McCarty. Um, if they go to uh, two, a win and two for each, then Phil would probably, let's see. No, it'll come down to net hoops in that case, so that's too close to call. So every hoop is going to be uh, very important, uh, particularly for Phil and David, um, as the afternoon goes on. Um, we'll be covering Gary and Robert from the main draw, because that's probably the one that has the most interest for the viewers. But with any luck, we'll get the one of those other two second eight games or both somewhere nearby where we can see them relatively easily and keep an eye on that Brett is warming up on the lawn next to us with Mary so it's just like Brett to steal um, show court when nobody else is around although well, presumably he was allocated that lawn Okay, so it's just been pointed out to us that one of the scores that's gone in this morning is incorrect. It has um, Robert winning game one against Chris and Chris winning game two against Robert. No, that's that. <laughs> Chris, Chris is very happy with that, but we're getting that fixed right now. Yeah, Robert and Gary just done the toss. Using Gary's kangaroo coin. Okay, so Robert's won the toss. So Gary is, um, was being polite and waiting to have for Robert to arrive before he did the warm up in case Robert wanted one as well. Um, Robert doesn't, but um, Gary now does. So he's just going to warm up for a little while.
Okay, so it um, looks like we're getting ready to start. Gary's just putting his head on straight and the head of his mallet on straight as well. Uh, he's looking a little concerned. Are you having trouble, are you? Oh, okay, so apparently he's um, mallet. He, he damaged his mallet somewhere on the first day or in transit and he's had it kind of fixed and he now says that the fix is coming apart. Okay, so we're away. Uh, Robert hitting blue in first. A uh, little bit deceptive from where we're sitting, but it looks, it's a nice distance back, but it looks to be a little bit short. And Gary's red has bunted into it and deflected to a better position. coming inside the red it's bobbling a little bit and it looks all right so it's definitely a runner so Gary's wandered over to have a look at the position of the balls and now he's worrying about his mallet on the way back and indicating that he needs probably a screwdriver yeah yep yep He's been offered a file, but he doesn't want that. He wants a screwdriver, so... Okay, so yellow is attempting to hit and has hit partnerable red, um, which is um, a disaster. Um, it's yellow has vanished to the boundary and it's cut red to the non-playing side of hoop one and blue is now attempting to take on the hoop and runs it easily nearly all the way down to hoop two so that's a pretty cracking start there for Robert So still hasn't got his screwdriver, so he's carrying on as best he can. Well, that's true, yes, because Gary plays with the um, zigzag handle, so he can't actually turn the mallet head around and use the other use the other end because its uh, hands will be the wrong way around unless he pulls it all apart, re puts the handle in. So red went up short, black's just gone up uh, to a perfect running position in front. And now yellow's coming up into the mix. I suspect that blue will um, clobber the yellow back out unless he chooses to clobber the red. In the meantime, I'm not 100% sure whether Gary's got his screwdriver he was looking for and used it yet or, or not. just started on the court on our right. Okay, so Robert does take yellow out, went fairly gently. And the screwdriver has arrived, so Gary's busy with that at the moment. Gary playing red at the hoop has hit the upright and deflected away to the boundary behind two. That thumping noise, if you may have heard it, is Brett trying to make the first hoop unsuccessfully. And Robert runs hoop two for a 2 0 lead.
Gary sending yellow over to hoop three. Uh, it's slowing down, but it looks reasonably good. Seems to have plenty of referees today, which is good. Six. Six referees for seven courts. That's pretty good. Right, blues come in. Uh, not quite as good as yellow, but good enough to be in the fight. Played red and hit blue. Just defended his yellow's position. Black is choosing not to hit yellow. Uh, he's coming in quite softly, trying to get some sort of block stymie. Has failed. So maybe he just wants to put pressure on the uh, damaged mallet and see how it's performing. So Gary. Appears to be hitting that straight into the um, left hand upright as we look at it. But comes across the ball as he always does and runs the hoop. 2 1 to Robert. It's an interesting choice of shirt today by Gary. It looks like it'll be a relatively new uh, West Australian state shirt. And normally he likes to play in his red Murabinda club shirt. Uh, Robert's blue ball down is brilliant. It's only uh, two feet out, not quite dead in front. So red's shooting, I would think. It's shooting not at full pace and has just missed. Tournament manager Sylvie is looking very pleased with herself, probably because this is the last round. Okay, Black coming down. Uh, that's another excellent shot. So another runner just in case. Might even be blocking yellow at blue. Pretty sure that will be. Queensland State team top, I reckon. <coughs> okay, so Gary's uh, taking his time on this. He does swing across the ball just a tiny bit, but I uh, just can't really tell from here, but it looks almost like he's pointed out to the left. Oh, that's where he's gone. Pointed out to the left of um, Black, like he, his only option was to run the hoop and was perhaps allowing a little bit on the lawn, which didn't happen. So he missed and Blue has crunched it through for a 3 1 lead. going on here with the referee but suddenly they've decided to stalk around the lawn following the players. Just be like the um, World Cup soccer referee. Everybody turned up to see me. Now Gary's red coming into five is very nice. Santa balls it with black from seven yards away. Yellow coming in from a not dissimilar position to red is also very nice. Blue and 
the position. Okay. Amy's just noticed something on the uh, screen that's unusual. Needs fixing. Ah, okay. So I just uh, booted up the bitrate. Settings were wrong. Ah, okay, so the settings were wrong. Okay, well, well, you know, it is a trial. We keep saying that. It doesn't make much difference, but... Yeah. Alright, so um, things have worked out okay for Gary here. He's getting a shot away with yellow. He's be a little bit careful of where that blue is in relation to his foot. Might have got him in a slightly less than ideal stance, but it doesn't seem to matter. Yep. He's run the hoop. So this referee appears to have uh, made himself in charge, and he's out calling the scores now for us, which is nice. So yellow ran all the way up to six, not not in front of the hoop, but certainly taking complete control um, Robert doesn't seem to be too worried he's put blue up in front of six near yellow anyway looks like all the referees have decided to watch a game each and uh, okay and then Peter and Barry so the referees down. may have um, changed from supervising to um, being in charge because we've got so many of them um, with perhaps only Allison who's living in courts four and one still being supervising okay so uh, yellow has the clearance on blue black brought itself up and has stymied red from the hoop um, it's a s slightly sloppy clearance by Gary the, got the blue away nicely but um, yellow skewed across the face of the hoop uh, so it's about three yards wide of the action and uh, Robert will have a target of red and with a, yeah, a spray oh he's clipped on his own ball yeah, so it looked like he had a, he had red and, and the hoop beyond and, and probably couldn't hit black, but he's managed to just nick the edge of black and moved himself out of the way. And opened it up for red to have a ping at the hoop for a three-all. And Gary has thumped that into the left hand upright, but it's spun through anyway. Three-all. Side for Robert would appear to be that uh, when Blue picked off his partner Ball Black, both balls have stayed on side. So Black's got a fairly easy approach to hoop seven. Yep. shooting at black unconvincingly and missing comfortably to the right out to almost corner two uh, blue coming in inside black uh, to a hoop running position fairly tight in on the left of the hoop as we look at it so red's taken all pace off this time and gone straight through the gap between black and blue. 
happy with plan one, so I went for plan two. Yeah, well, neither plan A or plan B really worked all that well. Um, and black runs were hoop comfortably way down towards hoop eight and pulls up in a running position a little angry. So yellow coming down from the corner too, and that didn't look convincing off the melody. That kind of bobbles like he almost barely hit the yellow at all. Uh, maybe he is spooked by his uh, mallet being slightly damaged. The yellow's actually really gone nowhere. It's past halfway, but way out near the boundary. So blue's come in. There's a second runner. Now, it's a much better swing, but it's not a rocating swing, it's just a positioning shot. Um, it's positioned slightly left as we look at it, of blue and black's just going to hit it straight back out again. Uh, possibly trying to go down the line of the block on between yellow and blue, and it's missed that. Yellow appears to be trying to make the hoop now rather than rocating blue. And again, he's hit that really badly, that's bobbled as well. I mean, the mallet doesn't sound the best. Um, and he's missed that comfortably to the left for him. And blue runs for 5 3. died and yeah, it's probably barely a runner um, certainly could jaws blacks come into a much better running position yellow coming in is a nice runner and blocking black at hoop coming in is also a runner not really impacting other than that so red now has the uh, option here of clearing black to a position where it, black won't be able to see yellow because blue will be in the way He's cut it a bit too much, and that's probably going to leave black here. Yeah, you're pretty much right there, Rob. So black's got all of yellow. Straight a little bit to the right and just touched the blue and bounced away into the distance and uh, moved the blue away from being a runner and left yellow unopposed. Looking 
to uh, run this to get back in the game. Yep, runs that relatively smoothly. So five forward down and holds a reasonably controlling position in the next loop. Blue's just going to go straight up the line. So again, about four and a half yards from the hoop. Oh, and here comes Brett He's making an appearance. His black ball across the middle of the game. Again, bounced the doors that left the mallet, uh, but nice position. Black coming in from the far boundary, oh, just a tiny, tiny bit short. Pretty good shot. firing and hits red center ball the red goes out uh, blue did not go out uh, that's the shot the Egyptians hate when you hit a ball and you don't go out yourself but this time red won't want to be hitting blue back out it'll be wanting to hit black off. That's a horrible shot. Um, that's gone the wrong side of the hoop completely and uh, at pace. So Gary's form has been a little patchy this weekend but I'm going to say most of this is coming down to the fact that his mallet is playing tricks or, or he's uncertain about what it's going to do and it's affecting his play. Anyway, black attempting to Jaws has wiggled through for a 6-4 lead. Now Yellow went over there off he of... Wanted yellow to come back. Oh he wanted... Yeah. yes yes he, yeah, he wanted Yellow to come back yes. Uh, so Yellow will now position at 11. Uh, yep. So hard to tell from where we are but you would hope to be trying to put yellow where black can't see it so he's only got a shot at yellow with blue so still taking that shot is probably to go paces off though All right. Well, Black must be able to see yellow because Gary's decided he's going to um, stymie or move Black. It's very gentle, and he's still the stymie. Very heavy footprints. Oh, it's you. Bouncing your foot, is it? What? It's you bouncing your foot, is it somebody? <laughs> I thought there was a horse creeping up behind me. Alright, so Robert's giving us a lot more thought. Um, so what? What's Yellow likely to do at the end of all this? Run the hoop or just try to Jaws to get the up and down and get back in the game? So, 
feel is running it probably doesn't matter where you put black as long as you free it up looks like black's going towards the northern boundary don't want to leave red untouched no so black to the northern boundary and maybe that was an attempt to get red to um, bounce into yellow on the way through okay so yellow just runs the hoop gently Six five to Robert, but that does allow Robert now to get down to twelve first. It's a good shot down. So Gary's having a look at whether Yellow can do anything about that. So if yellow can, red will probably come in. If yellow can't, red has to hit blue. So yeah, red's bouncing around a bit. And misses blue on the inside but doesn't run the hoop and comes out of the bounce. a bit long and it pulls up pretty quick okay so yellow could see blue hits it and rolls up <coughs> onto the leg where it's wired from black but it's not really doing much itself so blue could promote black blue could uh, just take position uh, as long as it doesn't drift too far up it would be wired from yellow or blue could just not care or blue could do that and hit yellow Red coming in now. Uh, it's in front of blue. Uh, Robert's immediate reaction is to look at red when clearing out with black. And Gary's still fussing about the face of his mallet over here on the boundary as Brett tries to hit him. the red with black about something over there Ooh, yellow has shot at the double of blue and black gone through the middle and bounced off the hoop
Okay, Robert runs and wins game one. So you've seen that? So first game is Robert. Um, I guess they're not going to hang around. I guess straight into game two. Um, Barry and um, Peter are playing again after hoops are all reset. So I don't know if that's game two or game three over there. And Torben and Shane still going. Mary's had a little bit of bad luck over here against Brett apparently. I'm not on the joke. What's the joke? Oh, the um, uh, yeah, I know what you mean now. Yeah, yeah. It's probably not for the viewing public that one. No. Yes. There's a little bit of interest in the other block. A few spectators have drifted over there. Mainly watching the Brett Mary game. There's a few watching Phil and sorry, no Graham and uh, David. And quite a few spectators inside. And a number of interested people watching uh, Barry play. Pete, presumably also watching Robert and Gary from where they're sitting. Anything exciting happening in croquet scores or are you doing something else? Images has been fixed, Wade. Thank you for notifying us. three games in the last round. With Torben being unavailable on the first day we could swing one of the last round games into that that slot. Yeah, you're it. You're it. Yeah, you better, yeah. Take it to three. <laughs> yeah. Take it to three, you must have good game for watch. Get that dodgy mallet out of your head. So we're just um, sort of watching a little bit of what's going on with Mary and Brett, although we're not doing any commentary on it. Um, as we're, well, I am scrambling through Grego scores just to see if there's anything interesting happening in the other blocks in, at Canling. I can't see anything exciting just at the moment.
Sam. We're currently sitting on Mary and um, Brett. Uh, we've got three, four, five. We've got Brett five one up by the look of it, and uh, he's now choosing to do all sorts of crazy stuff, like clearing his own ball to the other end of the line. humour around the place in the play um, but presumably some people are winding down because they're out of the running or maybe just strange things are happening on the court quite a bit of laughter coming from Phil and Janine's court Pass the message on to uh, Jamie, Wade. So, it's lunch time here as well, so all the players are still ploughing on through the games because they all want to finish early do something this afternoon um, but for those of us who aren't players who are doing other stuff um, we'll be having lunch sometime in the next hour ok game 2 is about to start uh, Gary leading off with the red, don't be confused at home he lost the first game so he gets to go first he just happened to be red and yellow and that mallet is making some Horrible noises, like there's a big air bubble behind the, f the head or something. Yeah, red's pulled up um, too narrow and too short. Um, black's very nice. So maybe Robert can sell you a mallet, Gary. Yellow's coming on and going too far. We've had an offer of another screwdriver, but that's um, been declined. And Robert's coming on with blue. So we've got Robert with two runners straight away, and Gary with the ball either side of the hoop. Uh, Brett's just pulled up a nice jump shot at hoop 7 to take a 6-1 lead against Mary on that line. Uh, Mary's put a very nice ball down to the next hoop. And here comes Brett. At speed. No spectators in line of that. See what Red got up to there. What did it do, Phil? What did Red do there? Did it shoot at something? Okay, so Red hit black to the boundary. And the black's just come back in in front. Very difficult to see this hoop from where we're sitting. Uh, yellow's coming very gently, trying to uh, stymie black, and it's hit black and deflected uh, a foot forward and slightly right. It probably hasn't stopped for black from being able to see the hoop. Okay, so we can see um, the 
blue, but we can't see the red. So I'm guessing red is not in. It's on the boundary, right behind Robert, or, or further away. It's not impacting the play anyway at the moment. So, so it's just a matter of whether blue is running hoop, clearing yellow, or promoting black. Really, isn't it? Okay, so he's actually well, okay. There's there's the the fourth of the three options. He's promoted yellow, but it's into the hoop, but it's actually stuck on the right hand upright. So has that given red and in off? Red's on this side. Oh, red's on the wrong side for an in off. Okay. All right. So it's probably not. A disaster for Rob then because uh, black will jump yellow. Yellow can't make it anyway. So it's looking at all his options of what he can do with yellow whenever it gets to be yellow's turn. Yeah, he's still looking. I was going to say he didn't play yellow, is he? Yeah, cause that's, surely it's red to play, but uh, he's just having a long look at all of his options with yellow. Okay, well, I don't know what red did, but it came in bouncing a lot and it has vanished into the distance just out of corner two. Um, it may have been an attempted jump shot, perhaps. So black now will jump yellow, I would think. And does. Uh, for a 1 0 lead. Stymied blue. And blue looks to be doing a jump shot over yellow to get down to second hoop. Uh, had to get up and down real quick to do that. Didn't. Moved yellow forward about a yard and freed it up, but blue got as far as uh, peak high. Red had been sent to the penalty point for being offside, is now coming in from there and it looks, looks to be pretty good. Looked a bit light off the stick, but it got there alright. has hit red, clearing it to the boundary, black's gone itself, so reset, start again, yellow coming in from by hoop one, seems to be a good weight, it's just pulled up a little bit, coming in 
Doesn't seem to be too phased by Yellow's position. Cross, uh, no, I don't think it's wide from red. I might have tried to wire from red. Yeah, everybody's having a look at black and yellow, so maybe Rob has got his blue a little bit in the way of his shot with black and yellow. Red's coming in closer to the hoop. Presumably yellow is going to clear blue because black can't see yellow. Black will probably therefore hit red. No, nope, he could see yellow. Misses. Yellow misses. Blue. Yellow out blue misses. Yellow misses blue. Yeah. Okay. Did you say blue misses? No, yellow out blue misses. I think I'm, I'm going to I'm going to look on that. No, I agree. Just to prove you wrong. I just said blue misses. Okay. So Blue's done a tiny little stop shot, sending Rita Welly and holding position in front of the hoop. <coughs> I think Jamie's getting a bit toe, he wants to take over doing the commentary, that's what it's all about. Well. Hello, where are you going with a pack out of band aids and a. Okay, so. Um, Distracted by the lady with the band-aids and the bandage wandering past. Um, Some of the um, people spectating on Brett's game. Oh, they're getting a bit concerned, yeah. Yeah, okay, so they're getting ready. Um, while we were discussing that, I think red fired at blue, hit the hoop leg and bounced away. That's correct. Yeah. Cameraman's all over it. Now black's come in fairly close to blue. Maybe in the backswing. Uh, Brett can't help himself, he's <coughs> absolutely smashed the ball through um, red and yellow and missed and hit the barrier which has done its job. And he was heading straight towards Robert, so you know, that would, that would look good on the CV, you know. It's pounding one into the ankle of the world number one. Who does he oh, take nice. over from if he's taken over? Um, well, when I last checked, Ahmed El Mahdi, who had won the uh, World Over 50s, was number one uh, by, I think, a couple of points uh, from Reg Bamford, and Ridge then Robert was in third spot. I think it might have been about five or six points, I think, and then Robert and Reg might have been one point apart, or something like that. Maybe the other way around. Seven points between the whole three of them, I know yeah. that bit. Yeah. And of course this also assumes that other matches aren't being played somewhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. So during all that, Robert's got hoop two. And Gary's fairly short with red. Black goes to the standard position. not much better than red. And blue 
has come in to a similar-ish position with black a uh, yard and a half closer and possibly got in black's way at the hoop if that really matters red coming in to stymie blue may have done that Black will be struggling to hit red. Um. So options here. Hit blue onto red. Gently promote blue past red. Jump over the two of them and run the hoop. Clearing yellow doesn't seem to be in the picture at all. That's a jump shot. He's jumping both balls. Yeah, he's hit the hoop and bounced off. And gone quite a long way down. So yellow has to get in there yet. That's yeah, pretty good. very close to red but it looks like he's going to try and jump you got to get that up and up, up and down real quick who is that phone going off it's annoying me oh and he has got it up and down real quick and he's landed on yellow and it's deflected blue away. Leaves red with a chance to run the hoop. Suddenly got very glary here. Okay, so uh, red's got a lot of leg and got a lot of spin and gone into the jaws. Gary signaled it's not through. Black's now looking at the shot. Well, Gary has a practice swing on the boundary. So black shooting, nowhere near it. It's probably the biggest miss that Rob's had all weekend. decided not to try and block a blue shot at red in the jaws and just sat back as the second runner if blue gets red out and blue has missed to the other side so that's two misses in a row by a reasonable -ish margin although you're shooting at it not much of a ball Mary's, Mary's showing him how to get a ball out of the jaws of the hoop on the other line there. Okay. Red runs hoop three and a nice pace to get to the front of hoop four. Come in at a very nice speed. 
to a good position. Red's got that covered though, so yellow just needs to be a runner. It looks a bit short. Oh, it's going to get in the way. Oh, what are the chances of that? So, um, red will be shooting the hoop because it can't hit black. And red and yellow are also fairly close together, so I'm surprised if blue got through the middle there. So there's a fair chance that blue's picking one of these off or both. Although it's a 21 yard shot. He's crunched it and missed again. Okay, so Red attempting to run the hoop. does do all. Steady black to the front of hoop five. And another steady yellow coming in, also to the front of the hoop. Pete's reappeared on the balcony. Did you win, Pete? Okay, Blue's come in. Um, fairly close. come in gently and just touch blue but doesn't really affect the outcome that's interesting <laughs> oh Peter Free has just sent me a message you just sort of sent to somebody else <laughs> okay so black looking to make what the hell's going on? This phone's gone off everywhere. Um, so black, black's crunched that through, which should leave both red and yellow uh, stymied behind the hoop from hoop six. Is Robert a 3 2 lead? Uh, so Gary's got uh, the red between his feet and the blue just next to him. Got to be very careful there. Got yellow up towards six, short and wide, not too bad though. I think that blue will be the runner. That's right. And black will be looking to hit yellow. Red's forced to come out on the left hand side of yellow and hasn't done anything. So it looks like black at yellow now. It's it yeah, that's a hell of a shot. He's put balls in balls in hoops everywhere. So he's he's hit yellow, peeled it into the jaws of of six and put his own ball in the back of hoop seven. Clearly black is over it 
the hoop seven. Just, just on the wrong side, but it might be right in the jaws of the hoop from the wrong side, so it's just a little tap through to be on the right side. So blue will just come in. going deep which is interesting I think the black's going to go extremely close to the hoop if he can get there he's looking at it like he might be a little bit on the back of the left hand upright oh, he's having more of a look now it looks better so it's a very gentle tap to the playing side the eyes out of that Gary. So it looks like the play is yellow is trying to hit blue and red is going to jump from the boundary and that's why he put red out there. The yellow has hit blue. The Gary does have a boundary jump shot on second or third bounce from out there. Um, with no faith in his mallet face, uh, would be quite the shot. So the blues just come in. So, what's the smart money on here, folks? Peeling black. No, missed to the uh, right as we look at it. Had the height, bounced in the right places. Gary's now um, telling himself off and having a practice swing. to Robert. It's red offside. So yellow's come down about the same height as black so they're about uh, that four and a half yard distance from the hoop. Uh, blue this time we're going to come inside those two I think. Yeah. Oh, it's, yep, it's got a bit of speed on and it's gone past the hoop. There's a lot of consternation in the crowd on the court next to us. Brett seems to be on a one man mission to get somebody. Under the bandages went out there. Moving around the furniture behind us here, so they're ready for the presentations. So red coming in. But I've got so much stuff in between me and that red ball, I can't make out where that is. I think it's okay, but just okay. Black has run the hoop, barely touching the sides, I think. 5 3 to Robert. coming across to nine that's a nice shot uh, yep very nice uh, yard ish back from the hoop so uh, Rob's just going to decide if he's going to shoot once or twice looks like once he's going to bring blue in yep so blue's the deeper runner Coming in 
medium place it blue and touching it making an enormous difference to its position might have actually f oh, blacks missed again so a little patch of misses by Rob um, red touching blue has probably put blue in a position where when yellow runs the hoop blue can get down to 10 and red can't whereas before blue may not have been able to get down to 10 anyway. go and make the hoop first Does make the hoop. Five four to Robert. Okay, so blue coming down past the hoop, past the yellow. It's forced a little bit right, but hung back enough to be controlling what's happening. And red's forced to go to the other side of the hoop. And that's a pretty good shot. Just turns a little left as it stops. So blue's blue will be hitting red, so it's just about where this goes, and that's skimmed off the blue to the front of the hoop, three and a half yards back. But has it stopped blue from seeing red? No, it hasn't. Yellow is kind of in blue's, uh, black's backswing a bit. Blue centre balls red away. Send a good look at the line as he walked away, just to see whether red was wired from black. I don't think it is. enough by yellow so he decided to turn around and just stop shot yellow back out. Yep. And it's come down to the boundary. All the way to the boundary. come back it's managed to get inside black and turned as they do on this lawn right left a little bit to a nice spot in front of the hoop it doesn't really change the plan I don't think blue hits red and uh, blue hopes to stop in front of the hoop I would think happened. <laughs> it's nicked the right hand upright now we just turned it into blue so it's actually touched blue pushed blue back uh, a few inches black or clear yellow Ooh. 
very close to clearing yellow through the hoop. It's hit the same leg that uh, Blue did on the way in. Bounced away. And now he's looking like he's managed to get a wire. Uh, he's probably got looking for a wire anyway. That's why he took it so close to the hoop. And he may well have got it. Corbin's on fire on that line up the back there. He's he's just cleared black and um, one of the jaws off that shot. So yellow's just coming near black. Not quite sure why. Perhaps he was trying to block black from the next two. for a 6-4 lead. So it's a position. Good enough. And, uh, now yellow has tried to bunt something by the look of it and he's indicating the lawn took the ball away. So he's probably trying to bunt black away a little bit. And he's just curled away. Settled in no man's land. And now it's blue shooting at red. Missing and hitting part of the ball black. And so that will put black well and truly offside. That's if the hoop gets made. Gary's gone very gen gently into a uh, wiring position. Already can see there. So. Roberts missed a few more than you would expect him to miss here, but um, you'd have to say he's not going to keep missing. So this is interesting. Why is now he's going for the stymie and got it? Alright, so if blue misses red, red is going to run uh, or jaws, depending on how he feels uh, and get control of 11 and 12 with black stymied by yellow hmm. I can write some notes for me Any of the other uh, no, people I watching? No. 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 Okay, so red to run. Trying to get down to the next two. It's caught a bit too much leg and held it up a bit. So it's not got to the next two. split roll. Yellow down 
anywhere. And giving you black down here. Twelve. Possibly go wrong. Well, yeah. Well, if it's hoop twelve, that's brilliant. If it's hoop eleven, that's awful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, that's right. That's pretty good job. Just coming in, a little bit lazy. It hasn't got, hasn't really got there. Stolen the Fletcher baby. Yeah. Lady behind us has stolen the Fletcher baby and making a run for it. Huh. Okay, the Reds decided to take on the hoop. And fails. Take care of yellow here. <laughs> so Barry's gone up to where yellow is, he, where he thinks yellow is going to end up to play his next shot. And he'll have a couple of practice swings while he's up there. Thumbs up to Robert, so Robert must have been going for the wire and he's got it. Oh, yellow at hoop wire, not yellow at blue. So yellow's coming back near blue. And just pulling up. Gonna get pumped out again by the look of this. No, maybe not. Yep. Sends yellow back out again. So red's got to hit black or hit blue and stay or just sit in front and think happy thoughts. If he doesn't get it, he'll hit leg and stay hanging around. He runs it and wins. And that about wraps it up, Robert. Well, yeah, that wraps up top block. Robert had won it anyway.
anyway. Uh, puts Gary out of the running for uh, any other prizes, I would imagine. But I think we decided pretty much that it was Malcolm or Pete, wasn't it? Most likely Malcolm. In fact, I think we decided it was going to be Malcolm regardless. So. We'll confirm all that later. So, uh, I'll just reset the scoreboard. I'll go and have some lunch, and Jamie, if you want, you can itch into this commentary, haven't you? Dunno. I'm sure there's somebody around that would like to do some commentary. And who better to commentate than Brett, because he just loves to be on show court. I'm you to sort that out. Just turn the mic off for a while.
if there's anybody still viewing we've got um, a few results so we've got Robert Fletcher obviously has won the first eight and Malcolm Fletcher will come second in the second eight Barry Hayden's won that uh, and second place is still up for grabs between David Scott and Phil Roach who are both still playing we don't know what the scores are unfortunately um, but we ought to put the camera on them for a little while and see if we can find out what's going on Second place still up for grabs. Fifth, eight, yeah, mathematically, Ethan Gumbrell will win that. Second place still up for grabs. And the, the women's eight playing the, uh, well, the women's four playing the little round robin. Um, it looks like uh, Kay Molyneux is in front. And uh, Janine Sisson is coming second. Uh, Jennifer Rector is not out of the picture completely, so there's still a little bit of interest there. Uh, anyway, we shall try and figure out what we can figure out here in the games that are being played. We've, we're a long way away from them, but we've got the camera on them, on Phil and Janine as best we can. And they're at hoop five, game three probably, I suppose. It's, uh, been going for a while. Yeah, okay. Jamie's going to go and find out some scores if possible. <coughs> but the rest of the festivities are finished. We've got um, a couple of Tasmanian players, Jane and Graham Highland, being coached uh, by Malcolm Fletcher on court one. Robert's gone over to have a bit of a watch. Mm. Malcolm's uh, wife, apologies I don't know her name, I or I should remember her name but I don't, um, over there watching as well. Um, one of the ladies in the club has um, stolen the Fletcher baby and is you know, taking it for a, a drive around in the pram. I was talking. It's alright, do you know anything about what's happening over there between Janine and Phil? You're going to go find out. Okay, that's two of you that can go and find out. Oh, so you're in the running as well. Okay, so Brett seems to think he's in the running for second place. He needs David Scott to lose. Jamie's. Um, I think that I need both Phil and David need to lose for Brett to be in yeah, the running. Yeah, well, it's not like Brett to have the, the facts right, so. Um, he seems to think he just needs David to lose. But. So, um, <laughs> Phil won the first. Yep, so Phil Roach won the first one. And they're in their second, and okay. it's currently 3 1 to Janine. Okay, so Janine 3 1 up in the second. And Graham and David, Graham won the first. Yep. And they're currently on hoop 12, and I have no clue what the score is. Okay, so we don't know the score in the second game other than they're on hoop 12, but Graham won the first one. So, um, it is all to play for still then. In any one of three people could still win, or can still come second in the event. So win the silver. be nice if we could get closer to the action but we can't really so um, we'll do our best from here. Uh, but if, um, if Phil, so you said Phil won the first didn't you? That's what you were told, yeah. yeah. Seems yeah. to believe. Okay so yeah so yeah we'd already figured that bit out. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 So um, yeah, so potentially um, there could still be a long day here because these two could still go to three, and it could get very tense.
Uh, I don't know if that's going to delay any presentations. The first eight could be presented, but it's probably a bit rude to do that, first nine. Um, a bit to, rude to do that whilst the others are still playing. But they are separate events, so they could be treated as such as well, I suppose. So David Scott up on lawn eight. Uh, appears to need to hit a fairly crucial row okay, because red and yellow are both in front of poop 12 and he's not he's hit the red which of course will come back and then he'll need to row okay, uh, about a seven yarder with black at yellow to stay at, in that hoop at least um, Graham's got his red one back in there again, so uh, even if he hits that, he's got to hit another rake after that. He has hit that. His ball has sprayed off again. Similarish distance. And yellow's just come back in front. So at the moment, it's um, hit a seven yard rake, ball comes back, hit a seven yard rake, ball comes back. And that is repeating. Uh, was in reasonable control of hoop 5 leading 3-1 oh let's change the pattern a bit over there um, but Phil managed to move her ball from the front of the hoop and they're still contesting hoop 5 ok so David's last roke hit both red and yellow got red away some distance but yellow only a little bit red's now back in front of the hoop again so the pattern changed slightly, but not a lot. And the yellow is a bit further away from the hoop and the blue is a bit closer. But black still needs to hit yellow. Or red. But probably yellow. Yeah. I was trying to do both, but uh, yeah, we could do David Graham on the camera for a while. Um, not sure what happened there. Black appears to have moved yellow and may have gone into the jaws of 12 on a bit of an in off. Uh, yellow seemed to be trying to bunt red up and missed it. So blue needs to hit red, I would think. And does send the balls it up to uh, towards hoop three. So red's coming back down. Hard to imagine why you would do that if black's a runner. Black isn't the runner. That's why. So is it? Is um. Have we got any idea where that is? Anyway, it's clearly yellow. Um, a long way up the lawn. So on lawn 5, we've got a game coming on between Kevin and Shane, which uh, is interesting because they're a different 8 each, so they're probably having a uh, bit of a hit around. They might have chosen a, a different lawn to do this on. But anyway... Maybe the manager could have told him to go on lawn four. Perhaps that's out of the way. Okay, so David seems to have manufacturing control of hoop twelve over there against Graham by constantly rocking and slowly edging his way into the position. But he now has the two balls in front of the hoop, and Graham needs to hit coming back. Meanwhile, uh, Janine and uh, Phil have moved on from hoop five uh, to hoop six, which Janine's just won. So that's either four two or five one to Janine. So 
David's swinging his arms around uh, when, when Black hit uh, Yellow away as if he needed to get Black up to 13. So because I think the blue is tucked in behind the red. David's having a look at what black's got. So David's walk, he's walk, I was going to say, well, truly he's not going to hit black again, but he's walking in from where black is through the line of blue, which is just tucked in behind red, uh, to attempt to make hoop 12, presumably to tie it up at 6 all. And has failed. So if we have got the score in any way right, then this is for the match. David's shake, still shaking his head in the background. And he's failed in almost exactly the same way. So Black having a think be distracted by the, uh, yellow, the bright yellow shirt of Janine walking across the line of his aim, even though she's on another lawn. Is this going to be on computer? Yes. It is. Yes. When? Don't know. Now. Oh. Right this very second. It's going to be on. No, well, you can get replays any time. Huh? You can get the replay any time, but it's right. on live now. Yeah. It's on, it's on So this time, Yellow has run the hoop and they're shaking hands. So we're fairly sure Graham won the first and has now won the second. So that's actually Graham, which puts David out of the running for the silver and means that it comes down to Phil or Brett. First game, Janine's up 5 1 in the second. Hello, Barry. Is there a time that you, Sue, BG, and I could chat about selection? If this is all working out as we expect, then Brett's chances of a silver medal are dependent upon Janine. Interesting. Okay, so Phil's black is coming in pretty hot over there and it looks to be really nice. Yellow is in the hoop where it was jumped over. And it's short. And blues come down.
they will have jagged a a block here, red at black. So it looks like Janina's trying to hit blue onto black and hasn't done so. She's hit blue forward and black appears to have a shot at the hoop. We have uh, more than enough referees wandering around. So black for the hoop fails. Uh, may have wired across the hoop from red, may not have. We'll be able to tell from where yellow goes. Well, she's now having a stop having a think. Uh, yellow's just taking position a little bit further back than she maybe she would have liked. Just come in. And just scrub the scoreboard. Come in and has nicked blue a tiny bit closer to the hoop or to red. Phil's choice. And Phil's attempted to run the hoop, and the ball's hit the hoop and stopped dead. No spin at all. Uh, and left red in a potential jump shot position. So a jump here will give her, uh, we believe, a 6-2 lead. A fail. We'll get Phil back into the game. Oh, she's failed. She's peeled um, blue through. Believe that could well be 5 3 now to Janine, and Phil will now be first to the next two as well. Funky might try to promote red. Um, she's having a lot of uh, think about it and now moving the barrier. Fortunately, the boys on the lawn here that are mucking around have um, just moved out of the way. Yellow's coming very narrow and missed by a reasonable margin through the boundary. Coming in looks like it's not too bad. And red's coming very narrow. And that's just done nothing and swung away maybe a little bit. That, that's a bit of a nothing shot, hasn't got anywhere near the hoop. And Phil is stalking this like he's going to pound the black through the hoop all the way down to the next one. And does. 
So we believe that that is now 5-4 to Janine. chance to get up there into a spot where yellow is wired through the hoop. Uh, blue's gone wide, uh, so it's open to yellow, but yellow's probably not going to hit it anyway. Red coming up also looks like it's coming in a bit hot and has gone past to exactly the same spot as yellow, in fact right behind it, so it's stymieing yellow now from doing much at all. So another chance for Phil to put the black in a running position where red and yellow can do nothing about it. He seems to have done that. Let's move the clip to the other side of the loop. Not that that makes a lot of difference other than being a distractor. Stalk the ball that feels, feels in, her back, in her line of sight, which is pretty handy. At least he's not moving around. And yellow hits, but you can leave as it goes away itself. So blue will now position, and he's looking at the wide spot from red. He's got, obviously got the wire because she's just padded in a bit closer. Obviously blue's in a position to clear red, so black should be the runner. And for some pressure on yellow's shot, that's coming up awful close. Oh no. So black has stopped blue from being able to hit red unless it hits black on the red. match going, they're attracting all the spectators, including all the players. So yellow coming in looks a nice shot. It's picked off blue to and bounced blue off the hoop to the other side of black, which of course is where red's hiding. So now blue, which couldn't hit red, can hit red. So maybe red and black are actually um, touching, touching or something similar. He, he doesn't seem to be convinced that he ought to try and hit this because he'll only move the black if he does. Uh, still, there must be uh, something that can be done. Well, he's gone hard. He's gone hard and very hard and he's hit red away, black away and his own ball away. So now nothing's in front of the hoop. Red, red coming back with pace off. Looks alright. So 
So black will be shooting. We've got a target of red and yellow. It's hit red. Turns um, board a bit more time. So we think, yeah, you know, we think just to, re to repeat for anybody who's still viewing, we re we think Phil won the first game, and it's five four to Jean in the second. We think, I'm not 100 percent sure about that either. Okay, so definitely five four to Jean in the second. No, Phil's missed that one. And we're if we if we're to believe Brett. Then this is, we'll decide second place between Phil and Brett. We can check that shortly on Croco scores. Once things are updated. So Red's come in as a runner. the glare and the, and the general sun here. <coughs> Let's see if we can fire up Krakos goes to Phil's mist. <coughs> Out from rolls heavily close, but it is still a runner. Uh, it's matches and then net games, yes. Yeah, so Brett is currently second. Phil has to win. If Phil wins, he will be second. That's not disputable. So Phil has to win. If Phil wins, he's second. Brett, if Phil loses, Brett is second. That's simple as that. You don't have to do any maths. Okay, Phil's missed. Okay. Yep, that's right. Brett winning comes down to Janine. So, um, yeah, there should be some uh, wheeling and dealing going on in the background over that. We've got no change to the third eight at this stage. First eight we know was Robert over Malcolm. Yeah, Red's got in the jaws. Fourth eight. We're still none the wiser about the fourth eight either. is definitely Ethan has won that. And uh, the game between the match between Bill Mainwaring and Claire Keating will decide second place in that board.
hoops. Our reds run hoop. Paul needs to win all the hoops here to avoid another game, we believe. The, the sixth stroke women's group appears to be uh, won by Kay Molyneux. <coughs> And second place is still up for grabs there. Phil's manufactured two balls in front of the hoop here. Chopping and changing glasses and sunglasses. So Janine has um, an attempt here with Red to, to take this hoop, which will win this game. If anything's to be believed, we'll put her into a deciding game. But we are prepared to be proven to be completely wrong, just in case. <coughs> She's failed to hoop. made the hoop. So if we've got this right, at 6-5 to Janine. Yellow is coming up a little short, a lot short. He's only just got about a yard and a half, one or two yards past the peak. Blue has crept past Peg and Yellow and got to a reasonable-ish position at 12. Red to manage to get past Black, get past the Peg. Uh, I feel it's the same height as Blue but it feels wide on the left of the hoop, uh, well left as we look at it, right as they look at it, of the hoop. A chance for black to um, get a runner down and put a bit of pressure on yellow shot at blue. He's past yellow. He's gone into, he's got into a good position with black. No. Okay, so the um, the manager is now stressing about this could take another hour to decide. So that confirms that Phil won the first and Janine. Is in control of the second. <coughs> okay. Oh, uh, you are live, so be careful what you say. But yeah, you can tell me what's happening over there. Phil won the first. Can you confirm that? You can but confirm. They're going to their third. Um, probably going to their third game over there. Yes. Phil won the first one, looks like Janine will win the second. Well, not yet, she's only 6-5 you know, up, but she's in, she's in front, but she hasn't won it yet. Who knows, no, you're quite right. Yes, so if it, you... It could go to a third game, yes. giving you a warning. It could be all over in five shots, or it could be you know, another yep. hour. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> you got a plane to catch? No, you're here for No, time. I'm here for days, don't worry about me. Okay, so he managed to hit. Uh, and now red is um, going to clear black. Presumably, therefore, red was not a runner. We didn't think it was. So the black will come back. Blue has some control over red. 
and yellow is up past the peg so it's beginning to look like Phil is stealing control of this hoop slowly slowly should load up the names on the scoreboard now that we've heard everything sort of confirmed. We might just wait until we need see if we need to do that. So blue at red. This is a fairly pressure shot. He's missed. Uh, that's, the Tasmanians are not happy. Especially Mrs. Phil. She's not happy at all. Okay, so red clearing black is the smart money here and has. Has red's gone past the hoop on the far side. Uh, yellow is a runner. Maybe not a good runner, it's hard to tell from this distance. And Phil's dilemma is um, first of all, is he wide? Can he see yellow? And second of all, should he try to hit it or just come in and hope for an error? So he's pulled off a block, so uh, Janine is going to jump. Um, with red. You know, 6 5 with red there, near wire the right side. There's some merit in just positioning yellow here and letting red hit black, unless red can't see black. Trying over, it seems a little unnecessary. Well, she's got it, I think. No, she's. It looked like she got it, but she's indicating with her body language that she did not get it. And it's hit the far leg and vanished. I think that was possibly a, a not the best decision. Yeah, Mrs. Phil is really watching the game. She thought that had gone through. Yeah. But we are a long way away, aren't we? Right. Red, Kansas. Red has hit black and gone legally up to near 13. the red ball is up near deciding hoop. He's not going to run with black anyway, but oh, he's promoted blue. That's not a bad idea. Um, he's promoted blue and he's also got black in as a runner as well, so that's a pretty good thing to have come up with. Um, Janine's off court eating a banana. Presumably won't run with red legal up at 13. Or maybe he just will. 
no he's positioning in the jaws that's the spirit that's what he needed to do with his red live up there Janine's just checking to make sure it is in the jaws and not on the leg okay so what is red going to do black will want to hit yellow because yellow could jump blue so red can come all the way in, doesn't have to hang back. He's come most of the way in, black will hit yellow. Uh, he needs to be careful if, if that isn't the jaws, not to give yellow a really easy shot. At, well, relatively easy shot at blue. yards away shooting at the blue ball in the hoop uh, or not there's not a lot of pace on that and it's drifted past okay he's walked up to black here to play black when it's not black to play um, that's interesting thank you Black and blue are very close to get. Black and blue are very close together. He may have he may have walked in over the top of black and just tapped blue back into the jaws properly. She's playing red, so that's fine. That's that's her ball that should be playing now. So okay, she's promoting yellow. We're trying to, uh, and has failed. Um, so that's messy. So he. Blue is in the jaws. Okay, so he's playing black now. And presumably black's going to crunch yellow and hope to deflect up that way. No, didn't. looks at the blue ball here. Yeah. So it may well be that blue wasn't actually a runner the first time we thought it was, and now it is because he plays it gently in. Yellow is going to halfway, fairly predictably. Uh, red is probably forcing blue to make this hoop. He could deem though and take his chances. No, blue is running, not particularly deep, that's six all, and red is first to 13. It's a nice weight, but it seems to be, I don't know, I was say it seems to be wide, but it looks alright. Getting, she's getting a clap from Brett, but he's invested, so you know. So uh, red looks like a one, two, maybe three yard slightly angry shot at right at twelve. Well, that doesn't look like it's going to get there. Oh, so black never looked like it was going to get there, but it just kept going, and then it's clattered into the back of the hoop and stopped. The yellow looks a much better pace and has got into red's backswing possibly.
doesn't seem to be too phased by yellow's position and it's practically a swing so I think she thinks you can make this without any issues although no, she's having to adopt a completely different stance than normal because of where yellow is so that's not a good sign Again, if black's, if black's not impacting the play, then red can just come in a bit closer rather than risking faulting or something like that and then let yellow get rid of blue. And very disappointed body language, so I think she's tried to make the hoop and she's hit the far upright and bounced away. So again, that might not have been the best choice. And black appears to be right. Yeah, no, I'm not. It wasn't on a leg at all. And he's um, just tapped through to the front of the hoop, and she's on a jump shot for. Um, well, she's not necessarily on a jump shot. She could clear blue and then clear black with red, but but likely she's on a jump shot to win the game. Okay, so uh, it got a lot of elevation. Um, well, it appears that it did because um, she she turned to the referee and said, "Did you see that?" And the referee said, "That's fine." Um, so yep. So they've, uh, I don't think Phil was in overly uh, in a good well in the best position to see that, and the referees confirmed it went through. So. So it's a jump shot win at 13 to take it to another game. Good lordy. Yeah, Phil won the first, so... Well, no, it's because it's um, going to go. Don't shake hands yet. the scoreboard seems we have another game
Okay, so there looks like they're about to hit off in the deciding game in this match, which is the deciding uh, game for second place in the second eights. So Phil wins this game, he is second. If Janine wins this game, Brett comes second. Phil's blue is very close to the first heat, but deceptive from here. Just looking at the other blocks, there's still no definitive positions in the third eight. In the fourth eight, we've got Greg Berry winning. Damien Hatfield, the likely runner-up, but Michael Trefusis Painter could still get there, depending on results. In the fifth eight, Ethan Gumbrell has won it. And Claire Keating and Bill Mainwaring are playing the last game to decide second between them and the women's four no not yet thanks not yet the women's four Kay Molyneux appears to have won that one and Janine Sisson will come second unless Jenny Rector can beat Kay in the last game and pass her pass Janine so we've got all the balls on now Blue looking to Jaws, I think. Red well back in a jumping position for Janine. Yellow seems to be out of it. Slightly out of it. Uh, and black is well out of it. Right, blue is just, blue's just positioned in front of the hoop rather than trying to get in the Jaws. Maybe he couldn't get in the Jaws. Attracting a big crowd now. Every spectator, except somebody who wants to have a chat about something, are very invested in this game. Even Malcolm Fletcher trotting down there. So Janine. Basically, just a little small clearance. Black weren't going, it looked like it was going to go to a defensive position in front of the hoop, but now it's checking what yellow's got. And it is going to a defensive position in front of the hoop, so a deeper runner. looking at everything and scratching their heads a lot. The blue centre balls yellow to the boundary. And hangs around halfway to the hoop itself. Just come in tight. Probably not a wise 
Joyce. Joyce has gone past the hoop. Uh, blue probably should wire itself from yellow here. Once anybody shooting at him want it to be red. And it appears to be what he's done. Shooting at uh, Blue has hit but has only nicked the ball. And Blue's gone back maybe two yards further. And Red's vanished half a quarter away. Black coming back in. Looks horribly short and wide. to hit blue and does. Uh, Blue's on the on the boundary, seven yards back from the hoop in front. Um, he's now going to play the wrong ball but he's been corrected by somebody. So yellow's nearly in corner one. So blue now just coming in. coming in as well. Maybe a tiny bit short where she wanted to be. And Black will probably take a nice tight position in front of the hoop and does. And yellow now needs to move something, preferably blue here. bounced a bit as she hit it but she's got enough of it to get it away she got herself away as well and she's managed to get lucky there blue has no swing at red because of the hoop in the back swing and in fact blue is also going to struggle blue is going to struggle just to get somewhere near black probably get over there but that would be probably the wrong side of the hoop Done well to get there. Yeah, done very well to get there. Okay, so it's hard to tell what, what exactly Red's got. two balls with the hoop in the middle and it could be blue in front of the hoop. Okay, so she's run the hoop, I think. Yeah, so she did have a ball either side and she's managed to run the hoop. Right, so it may well be that Phil now is stymied with both balls from hoop two. Promoting blue here, and is. It's gone near hoop six. So yellow will be first to hoop two. Reasonable position. Two and a half yards back, maybe a heavy angle. So Blue's gone to a similar ish position on the other side. Might be slightly straighter on the hoop. Reed's just coming up. 
past the blue on the inside and crashed into the hoop and bounced to a nice spot where it may well be a runner. coming up without any real pace. Not quite sure why. Yellow or clear blue. Probably worth trying to cut this a little bit and does. And that's a really nice shot. Okay so Interesting that Phil played a shot black before he bothered to check where red was. And now he's looking. So blue. Has managed to hit red and get it back, but not away from a running position. <coughs> and Janine's run that for a 2-0 lead. Hard to tell from here exactly where that is. It doesn't look overly distraught, so I think it's probably a, a Jaws or maybe a runner. Yellow's just coming in. That's not going to get there. That's well short. Blue coming in doesn't look to have the pace either. It's done better than yellow, but not as good as black. Red may have a bit of a target of both uh, blue and black here. Yeah, it's going for something. I'm missing. interfering with his stance and black has if that's in the jaws that's a bloody good shot <laughs> and he's not putting a clip on so if he's not putting a clip on then he's got that almost through but jaws and that's a pretty damn good result because yeah, yellow's doing nothing about that, and red probably won't risk it in case it does peel black. Oh no, it must be through, because yellow's going straight down to four. Now he's putting a clip on. Two ones to Jane. Torben. Yes. Hello. Hello. I saw her get the first hoop. She got hoop one and hoop two. Oh, yeah. He's just staggered through hoop three. It's a nice, nice blue. Now again, it's deceptive from where we are as to what that is in terms of how far across the face it is, but if that's right in front, that's an excellent shot. You'll probably get hit by yellow. Red's come into a good position in front of the hoop. Black from where it ran the hoop to, straight down, past yellow, past blue, past hoop. Okay, so 
the Janine's telling us exactly where blue is by lining it up for us. So it's makeable. So uh, yellow has to decide whether it's running heap or hitting blue. for the hoop, failed, and bounced back with a tiny bit of spin, but it's hard to tell now whether that's giving blue an in off or whether blue needs to deal with it. He's, well, either way, he'd be coming down that line. So. Yep. We'll, we'll pump for a potential in off here and see what happens. No, he's just run the hoop without touching yellow at all. Too old. So, right across the five. Black has shot at red, and it's hit red, and it appears to have cannoned off red into the jaws of five. I doubt yellow's doing anything about anything, because I think that's got blue hoop leg in the backswing. Yep. Blue, smally, probably has uh, not a lot ahead of it there. Probably get in where red could hit it. Give red something to hit. Torben's young eyes to tell me whether black is actually in the jaws or just a tiny, tiny bit out in front of the hoop. Anyway, blue's done well to get to where it did. I think it's sitting on the right hand leg, so that's the option for in off. Ah, uh, okay. Alright, so Torben thinks there's a potential in off here. got an in off. 3-2 to Janine. So it looks like a good black. Weight's nice. Yep, getting a Getting one clap from the crowd, from Gary, I think. Which is strange for a Tasmanian in front of a Tasmanian audience that the only person who clapped was a West Australian. Closer to hoop three than hoop six. Blue, blue coming down. Uh, I 
feel that's not too bad. Careful on might have to be careful on this back swing. And I feel they might both be a little bit right of hoop centre, which will give yellow jelly red a chance to come down past the two balls and maybe in front of the hoop run the hoop. as well. That lawn does slope a little left right but both of those seem to be whacked rather than uh, stroked. And he's gone over, and over to see Brett probably about um, another banana or some lollies. Taking the pace off, but that pace oh, that's short as well. Uh, it's blocked yellow at hoop. Uh, red coming in very close to yellow, sneaks past. Looks to be very nice. support that black uh, red might have blocked black at yellow. It's going for a jump shot. He's got a lot of bounce and he's managed to land on top of yellow and clear it. Blue is about 
Yeah, how far is that? Four yards, Tolman? Four yard shot, blow it red. That's if you choose to take it. He, I reckon he's shooting the hoop. Yeah, hasn't even got anywhere near the hoop. That's gone past on the left as we look at it and settled in front of hoop five. So it's like red to creep. Which she's done very nicely. Well, I can't see black or blue hitting red now. Doesn't mean they won't try. There's a decent bear here running through the back of the hoop. Yeah, okay, so in case you can't pick that up on the mic, Torben says if he's a decent player, he'd run through the back of the hoop. But he, he hasn't, he's just gone to a hoop running position behind red, uh, two yards back, two and a half yards back. Um, Janine's just had a look at the line of red and, she's, and she hasn't lined it up as if it's in front of the hoop. She's lined it up as if it's on um, an angle on the left, uh, as she would look at it. So she's decided, I think, that she's going to hit black. And she's missed black. She's missed the hoop and she's gone to nowhere. Um, well ahead of the play. Okay. So, what with blue? If red's as bad as she lined up, then blue should be able to see it. It won't be wide. <coughs> well, if you hit it, you want to make sure you hit it, not, not just nick it. And he's wound up, and he has missed. And red, I think, is going to Jaws. Well, she's, she's, might, she's, she's looking at it like it would go through. And does. And just staggers through for a 4 3 lead. <laughs> so the bad yellows turned out to be reasonably good now. Baby crying sounds like Chris the day you faulted him. Yeah. Yeah. He's never forgotten never that. Never forgotten that yet. That's right. <laughs> so black's quite a bit short of the hoop when it came down. Yellow was dropped into the gap in between. So yellow's about a yard and a half, two yards from the hoop. Black is another two, two and a half yards from yellow. Blue is short of that even, so it's not really pushing up near the hoop here at all. The red can't do any more than come out to the side, so it hasn't impacted anything either. So we're expecting black hitting yellow with a with a low percentage outside chance of deflecting towards the hoop. Got more deflection than we're expecting. Yellow is gone not even to the boundary and black is past the hoop to the back boundary. That's a great shot. And yellow is looking at coming back in and giving blue a similar shot to what black just had. Probably not 
shoot at it now. Yeah, I think he might take the hoop on here. No, he's just coming in, he pass off. And if blue's good, then it makes yellow look like it's not anywhere as bad as I thought it was. Red's short. He looks a bit nervy. Center ball. His black's carved away near the peg in the center of the lawn, obviously. And yellow is roughly peg high, halfway to the boundary from the hoop line. Needing to do something about the blue runner. He's hit blue. So I think centre ball. The yellow's gone up past the hoop and the blue is on the back boundary again. Uh, now, you're probably going to ignore yellow. Don't think he'll shoot at red in case he misses. I think he'll, he'll you know, take position and make himself a target here. Oh god, he's crowded into the back of the hoop. And again, I'm not really sure where that's settled to. He hit right hand upright yeah? yeah and dropped so it might well be that he can just run back through the back of the hoop yeah, well, sitting hard up on the foot. Okay. Okay. Got bloody good eyes talk yeah. Corbin That's thinks it's sitting hard up on the back of the hoop That's on the right hand got glasses. <laughs> so, so red just sensibly came into a better position so black is going to hit red Missed the corner one. Yellow will ignore blue. It'll probably be a second runner. Yep. And now we find out whether blue can get back through the hoop or not. Not, not how he's standing. He doesn't look like he can. Gary's laughing, he's got a very carrying laugh. Yeah, Phil's black looks pretty good over to nine. He's got a clap from somebody. with black, yellow's gone too far I think. If they were happy with black they'll be happy with blue. Because it's better than black was. And red is trying to hit something. Uh, black it has hit black. She's happy, she's throwing her hand in the air to acknowledge that, giving her a fist pump. You know, she is doing all this for Brett, not for herself. So um, you know I'd be I'd be thinking carefully about this. So she has clear black, but black can now clear yellow. It's only five yards at most away from yellow. Mm -hmm. 
and he sent a boulder. So the yellow is now back to two thirds of the way on the court on the south boundary. Blue is a runner. Black is not a runner. Well, it's, it's maybe a runner. It's, it's a good position. Okay, yellow shot at blue and missed to the right, out to the boundary under the trees there. Phil's telling the referee where it went. Blue, blue running hoop. Uh, it would be nice if blue, oh, blue's going in jaws, that's probably smart. So you really want to win two hoops if you can to get back in the game. So um, jawsing or running really, really hard up the far end of the wall. No, Brett can win. A second, come second. Brett can come second. Kevin has got more hoops. Don't look at hoops, it's matches, and then it's net games. Did you read the instructions about the competition when you came in? Uh, no. Clearly not. I <laughs> read the player when it first came out. Came out, they were saying net. What did it say? What did it say? It said eight. Eight. First oh, eight. yeah, first eight, not first nine. Yeah. You did start on Friday, what's the matter with you? Yeah. <laughs> you would have come in on the same shitty late night flight, regardless. Now yellow has hit blue, that's a great shot. Okay, so we have black in as a runner, we have uh, blue now that's reasonable a few yards away but yellow appears to be between blue and red so it's a good result to get blue to there and okay so blue's come back in getting as close as possible again and red might be confronted with the same shot that she had at hoop one she's got two balls and a gap in between which leads to the hoop think about it, she's walked away a second time, stalking at speed. And runs the hoop. Okay, well it's looking like Brett's going to steal second place thanks to his wife. Makes you wonder why he thunders balls into her ankles as often as he does. Okay, it's a nice black though. Right. Yellow coming up looks like it's long again. That's what happened last time at this. She was long with both yellow and red. He doesn't waste any time getting blue away to a reasonable position in front. And we'll see if Red can match the previous attempt where it's time he's yellow behind the hoop. Yeah, she's got a fair bit of pace on that. Uh, it's got past blue and it's gone the other side of the hoop this time. But it has gone past. Yeah. Phil's going to have to do some serious work now to get this uh, 
organised and get all four hoops from here on in. Bounces out of the hoop. Tor Torben was a beautiful baby as well, apparently, but things went downhill after that. Yeah. I was just saying, Torben was a beautiful baby as well, but things went downhill after that. So yellow's gently moved black and stayed near the front of the hoop itself. From here we can't tell exactly where. Phil's looking at it with a lot of um, intent. And it may be blocking Blue's hoop run. In fact, he's taken the clip off, so it looks like he's jumping. And he's hit the hoop and bounced off and spun away in towards corner three. So uh, smart money is now on Janine. Red should destroy the black here protect yellow and that may well be it within the next three shots. Yep, first part's done. Yeah. Red's powered black away and it's actually scooted across halfway towards 11 just in case black does run the hoop from nowhere. run the hoop. He's got neither of those. Uh, appears to have gone past on the left and uh, Janine's out of the out of the chair like what would Alan say? Bench or something steroids. Ready to just tap this through and win the game in the match and get Brett the silver medal. Includes all of the play from here. There'll be a presentation um, soon. Uh, Robert and Alcom in the second. So, thank you very much.
Wilson will be defending his title. And there are several amongst us looking around here who have been here before and had the privilege of um, having some very fresh weather that we've got down there, clean air, <laughs> and, uh, and winning uh, $1,500 for first prize and $1,000 for the second and $500 for the third with fabulous hot suits and uh, wonderful <laughs> hospitality. And we'd love you to, um, to re-enter, and especially those young boys. I hear that Ed is rounding up positive of um, those young New Zealand students you know, to come over. So it will be a fabulous competition, so please come. Okay. Thank you for that, Ben. Well, also, this time next year, we have to be hosting the Open Shore Cup. So some of you will be playing in it. Um, if you're not playing in it, please come back and visit us and we'll do it all over again. So, moving on. Now, Marty, who's shirking his duty again, wherever he is. <laughs> anyway, um, first of all, I need to thank all the players for coming and making such a great event. We thoroughly enjoyed your company and hope that you've enjoyed the visit. Congratulations to everyone for playing the game in such good spirit. Um, and congratulations to everyone as well as the, the winners. Great to see our CEO visiting and being very helpful with our planning for the Open Shore Cup next year. Now, a few people I need to thank, and I know I'll forget somebody, so forgive me, but there are some important people that have made this event so good. First of all, our greenkeepers. Chris has done a mammoth job of keeping the lawns to a great standard. And if ever you wanted to see a grown man cry, it was Chris last Monday morning when he saw all the dry patches. Well done, Chris. <laughs> Noel Christ, Chris's this right hand man, or foreman, I don't know what he calls himself, who loves toys. He's been up blowing the lawns off at six o'clock every morning to clear all the rubbish away. So Chris Herford, a man of many talents, who shows up everywhere where he can assist, whether it's putting the urns on or mowing the lawns, Chris is the man that's be, to be there. To our army of perpetrators, what a team, ready to move in when needed. They, they've done a wonderful job, so thank you for being here. referees, three or four referees every day on the lawn is an excellent effort and thank you to Alison for organising the roster. I don't think there'd be too many other events when you get a referee to the lawn. So the referees have done a famous job and it's just good. I could have said cut at the end but that's alright. Uh, our clubs for, 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 for providing morning and afternoon tea and keeping the place clean and tidy. Our members who helped out with the sausage sizzle. Lynn for managing the lunches and the cold drinks. Russell for, for providing the beer. And we never did find the missing carton. <laughs> and to the members who helped set up the lawns and put the gazebos up. To the live streaming people who reminded me so often not to talk so loud. <laughs> our cheer squads and visitors who helped to add the atmosphere to the games. Our visitors who set me straight about croquet scores. And I might add, these people have come from all the different states. And last but not least, the weather gods. <laughs> I'm sure um, I've missed some people, but thank you, everybody. What a great weekend. Onwards to the Open Shore Cup. Cup? Or Shield? Shield. 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 Next year. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> now, to the winners. Um, Marty, where are you? Come on, you've got a job to do, you've got to protect these shoes. Now, Mark, 
date at a four. Okay, all right. So, so that was pretty close actually. So that was really good. So well done to everybody there. So the people um, that were quizzing just called Barry up who uh, came first. And hang on, I haven't worked out who came second. <laughs>
coming up with um, uh, hopefully some better form in, in, in your next match. Um, so yeah, it's always a fun tournament. And congrats to the other winners. Um, and yeah, really enjoyed myself. And uh, uh, good luck with the uh, open short field. Yeah, we'll see you back, no doubt. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs>